Hello, folks. Uh, today, consider this with your permission slip to put your mental health first. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com. Use promo code Nate during sign up to get $100 off your first month. That is $100 off at Talkspace.com. Promo code Nate. Life insurance gives you peace of mind and you can trust Policy Genius. They don't add on extra fees or sell your info to third parties. Head to policygenius.com slash Nate to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save at policygenius.com slash Nate. Thank you to our friends at Masterclass. Masterclass, learn from the pros and get unlimited access to every class. Get 15% off annual membership at masterclass.com slash Nate. That's masterclass.com slash Nate for 15% off. And finally, Upstart. They've helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Don't wait. Check your rate today at upstart.com slash Nate. Loan amounts may vary. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. Let's go, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land uh, podcast. I'm here with uh, Aaron Weber, Brian Bates, and we have a, a wonderful guest, very funny Comedian, uh, known for a long time, Greg Warren. Hey guys, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, he's excited. I'm Speaking excited. Of, man. I'm we excited. found him out wandering around the neighborhood, <laughs> and I was like, "Greg, do you want to do this podcast?" Today? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you, you, I could see you. I was you, hitting around. Are it. you? Uh, <laughs> you're you're not against walking around the neighborhood. Would no. You walk, yeah, yeah. You don't mind like you just kind of wander. Yeah, I've done. Um, you know, on the road, I. I I was doing a lot of walking for a while there. And yeah. Yeah. You get into some suburban neighborhood and then you start wondering, man, I don't know if they, I should be doing this. Like, <laughs> I feel like they're fine with you though. I think so. I think when they see you, they go, they probably, I mean, they would just be like, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's our neighbor. Yeah. They yeah. assume you're there. Yeah, you have a yeah, joke yeah, about yeah. going for your walk. And yeah. When, yeah. You, when, is it, when you turn 50? Um, or, I think I started doing some walking. I, I did a lot of walking in my forties. Well, okay, maybe it was, I remember the joke at the time. And then yeah, when it was I hit something the, like, yeah, you know, well, yeah. My neighbor at the time was like, "Are you going for you your going walk? for your walk?" I'm like, "My walk." Yeah, that's a bad. Thing. That's not good. <laughs> I didn't know it had gotten to that. Yeah, yeah. go head on out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go watch my stories. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. They get they just on their clock. They're like, yeah, yeah. They go great. school's about out. <laughs> How do you know? Well, once Greg passes our <laughs> house, I know the bus is not too far behind. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, well, we're glad uh, you're here. We're getting to uh, – from Missouri, so we're doing a little episode mm-hmm. about Missouri, which is uh, fun. Uh, so we'll read some of these. We read comments uh, from yeah. – uh, so we're going to read those. Uh, first up, Forrest. Excellent episode. Love the AI talk. I almost said owl. <laughs> uh, I imagine I am not the only one who signed up on the – D A L L E waiting list to try out this art creating AI. Is it ironic that I had to finish a puzzle to prove that I wasn't a robot to get on the, that list? That is yeah. ironic. Yeah, I'm glad I'm out here spreading the gospel of this AI, dude. It's terrifying. It's yeah. fun. It's exciting. So, this is the art thing that you talked about. Yeah, yeah. And so they're signing up. People are like in the waiting list to try it. Yeah, everybody's getting on board, man. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a mm-hmm. lot of great images created pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome, man. You know, images that are like, you know, no one did anything. <laughs> Take the heart out of everything. <laughs> How'd you think of that? I just accidentally, a cat walked over my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and now i got to... You don't think I, there's art in the programming of this? There's art in the programming, uh, the programming, but it's like we're not watching the programming. Like it's... Yeah. It's almost like to show the art of the programming, I guess, would be don't hang that picture up. Have like a dedicated space that's a blank wall, and you tell them, go do it, type whatever you want, and yeah. it'll show it. Right. That would celebrate what the art should be. That, I think, would be very fun. Sure. But if you hang up a picture of the a avocado chair, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, it's... You know, That's it's exactly going to be what it is. It's like, yeah. golly, man, did you who did that? Oh, a computer. It's like, yeah, okay. So it's not even art. It doesn't just, make the mistakes. Yeah. Okay. Just in. I mean, I get it's fun. It's a fun like. But I think if you did it like that, where if you go, just type something in. If you had a keyboard, maybe right. It, real art. You have a little keyboard laid out. You have the computers like behind the wall, and it's yeah. like a picture frame. 
That'd yeah, be pretty awesome. That would be. <laughs> and then you go just type whatever you want to type in, and then it draws it. Mm-hmm. That would be. I might do that. We'll set that All up. All right, I'll sign up for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like that avocado chair. Picture. Yeah, that's something. Cool. It's something. All right. <laughs> Center one speaks to me. <laughs> it's exactly an avocado. Um, Chandler Starks, listen to this week's episode on my way home from my last college class ever just to hear Aaron explain how AI can write whole papers instantly. Guess I learned the biggest college hack a few minutes too late. Mm-hmm. That is true. Man, can you imagine that? But Cole will be in good shape. Yeah. Cole is our intern that looks stuff up, and he uh, he could just fake it. He just He's starting to college in the fall. Oh, he's yeah. smart, though, so he is he's like AI. So he'll just have the athlete, athletes using him as AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell you. If you're – if you want to be a smart college student, you should do it where you write your own papers because you're legit. Yeah. But when an athlete just charge people to be like, I'll do, what do you want to do? And then just and write all the papers AI. Yeah. It's, and then you make some cash. It's interesting ethical uh, question because it's it's like it it's not plagiarism. You're not stealing something from yeah. somebody because these words have never existed. I don't think Ever. it's in the spirit of the uh, yeah. But yeah, it's not quite what they want for sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like you're ripping it off from somebody. You but know? it's not you. You know, you're not learning. So like, if you went to college and was like, "I'm here for something else," like if there was a game plan, like you're like, I if you if someone's like, "I don't believe in these papers. I think these teachers are making this stuff up." Something like that, I would probably do. <laughs> you know, like, I ain't falling for your system. You making me read Shakespeare and stuff. Like yeah. there ain't no reason for me to read like. If there was like a, you could maybe talk your way into believing that, mm-hmm. but I think a smart kid, instead of writing out an athlete's paper, I think I would just, you know, you got to be make sure if they start getting caught, you know, these guys are gonna come down on you. So I'd probably have, you know, some people around you yeah. have some uh, fall guys, some some fall guys, some security. Mm-hmm. So you're saying you're you're gonna designate your friends, you're setting them up to take the fall for. Oh yeah, you got yeah, okay. to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Like I wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think these athlete kids would even realize. Like, I mean, I I'm not an athlete kid, but I'm not smart. So I wouldn't I'd be like, this is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. this is really yeah. well written. And then yeah. if you don't say anything and the teacher's like, I know this is you're right, there's no way they can prove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching uh Bill Maher this weekend and he was complaining about paying college kids debt because of all these ridiculous classes that are now out there, like friendship class. He didn't say that, but he said other <laughs> yeah. things like that. And the whole crowd applauded. You said the same thing two years ago on this podcast, and, and everyone booed you. So People got mad. Right. You're just ahead of your times. the problem. I'm too far ahead. Yeah. People don't even understand what's happening. We well, just have to catch up. By the time it's caught up, you've changed again. <laughs> oh, so yeah. like, you're never That's where true. you need to be. No. <laughs> It never works out. I go, oh, yeah, you're finally doing that dumb way. Well, Your college shouldn't exist. Switch your position. I don't. I don't think they should all exist. They should be big buildings. They should put homeless in there. Like that's that. You get more out of that than I'm already. I don't. I don't want to pay for your debt now. I don't even want you to be allowed to go. Uh, it's bit, You know, I should just be a guy that's two years behind. Yeah, yeah. that'd be a way to go. Mm-hmm. Then you're like. You're like, what if they did this? You're like, yeah, they're well, they've been doing that for a few years. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> they should think about electric cars. You're like, yeah, dude, that's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's here, to be honest. <laughs> and you go, all right. Well, I haven't seen one. So, uh, Lena or Lena, Lena Peter. Today's episode was a lot of fun, as always. I'm interested to know your take on the following moral dilemma. You're traveling down the road in a self-driving car at some point in the future, and the truck in front of you loses something off the back. The only way for your self-driving car to avoid crashing and killing you is to swerve into a group of pedestrians on the sidewalk and kill them. Self-driving cars will have to be programmed to respond to this situation. So the question is, who should the car always default to saving, you or the stranger? Mm, You want a loyal car or not a loyal car? Mm -hmm. Uh, Hmm. A gr- it's interesting in this thought experiment. It it's it's a group of pedestrians instead of just one person. I don't know why they had to up it like that. Well, does it? I mean, it's the same though. But group, you can picture more. You know, 
Like group makes right, you right. groups the one you're like maybe too many people are gonna be like obviously get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. But then group you're like all right dude five well, to one ratio five to one you like you can't run through five people. Why don't they say group of grandmothers and children too if they're gonna up it like this they're gonna really it up could be that group too. covers it. But I, okay. I understand. I think one. I think a person makes a joke about it. If you go one, then a person's like, "Well, I'll just hit the other guy," and they laugh, mm. and then you don't even get into the thought experiment because yeah. it's like funny. Okay. But if you say group, then you're like, "Well, now I got to think about it." This is what I love thought experiments. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, the true AI could assess. I'm going with the movies now. The worth they, they should they should they should be able to look at all the groups of yeah. the people. Well, that guy's. A, Convicted felon and yeah. the guys, yeah, yeah, that. like the Terminator, just immediately they, look yeah. at what they're they doing. They could do the, they could do your worth of like, if you're gone, are you going to be? Does it matter? You know, yeah, like Bates is just getting hit every day. <laughs> he got, <laughs> cars are just driving through his living room. Just, nothing even fell off. Yeah, the truck. nothing fell off. The truck. <laughs> there was there was a there was a wreck on two highways over, and the truck's first thought was like, I got to find Bates. It just swerved. <laughs> seeking me out seeking. <laughs> not again you just <laughs> it looks for the least worth person in the area <laughs> just the general area <laughs> yeah, across his traffic yeah. Yeah. truck pulls up to Bates Brian's robot gets walk. out and knocks on the yeah. door <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello? we are you're looking here. for Bates <laughs> there's a little honk outside and you're like what and he, the car's like come here come here <laughs> calling him over <laughs> and the car just with his trunk just flips a ball that bounces in front of the car. I'll get like, it. I'll get it. <laughs> and then just, how do you? <laughs> it's decided. Yeah, yeah. Just anytime there's any trouble, the car goes, well, who's the least worth of a person in the area? And I go after them hard. <laughs> that is true. I don't know how they're going to program that. That's probably the, the tricky part. That's probably, you know, that is crazy because it's like, what are you, you going to do? Mm -hmm. And then is it like whose fault is it? It's like you could be like I'm just sitting there, I'm not. You know, I don't make the decision. I think it's a it's a they're going to calculate probability. I'd say the probability of those group those pedestrians dying is pretty high, probably higher. Yeah. Than the chances of you dying from running into something in front yeah. of you. Make the car safer, and yeah. then you won't have to wipe or, out a yeah. group of innocent people. Yeah. Depends on what fell off that truck too. Yeah. Like anvil That's a good point too. Yeah. It was, it was, it's an anvil. Yeah. yeah. Just the anvil. anvil. Yeah. Bugs Bunny. Anvil. So you, yeah. You don't see anvils that much anymore. <laughs> no, nah, with the cartoon, there's a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Probably they back around? in Greg and I's day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're big Is big that big. how y'all got weighed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, My dad did weigh me. I was in a wrestling tournament when I was like 10 years old and we were coming back from vacation on Florida and he stopped at some <laughs> like truck stop and, and they weighed me on like a meat scale or something because <laughs> we had a tournament that day. Or yeah. Yeah. You mind, you got a scale in here? We got one for the pigs. Yeah. You, yeah. Mind weighed my, yeah. you mind weighed my boy? <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. It my was boy. really like that. My boy. <laughs> my boy's got a wrestling tournament coming up. You mind weighing him? Hmm. Uh all right, uh, Jesse Mann. Hello, folks. Two episodes in a row. I've listened to two self-proclaimed Tennessee boys mispronounce Appalachian Mountains. It's Appalachian, not App Appalachian. 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 Oh, and I say <laughs> you Appalachian. You just said it the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's Appalachian. not Appalachian. It's Appalachian. <laughs> Appalachian Mountains. Come on, guys. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't know if uh, Appalachian. Appalachian. I think I like that better. Appalachian. Appalachian. Doesn't sound right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know. Yeah, well, he knows. Jesse knows. Uh, everybody knows. It's, we know it's Jesse. <laughs> Appa, Appalachian. I bet they say it like Appalachian Mountains. We're just going to keep um, saying it. Appalachian. It's going to come and go, Jesse. I'll be honest with you. I'm way off. I thought it was the Smoky Mountains in yeah. Tennessee. People just call it the Smokies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's the Grizzly River Rampage. <laughs> That's an old ride on Opryland. Casey Nelson. I love how they kept questioning if Arnold was in the third Terminator when they were looking right at his face on the cover, bigger than it was on the first and second cover. <laughs> that is that is very yeah. funny. We're like, I wonder if God, Arnold's in Terminator Three right there. <laughs> it looks like that's the one, the only one that looks like it's only about him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every other one. Yeah, 
Like, I don't know. I'll watch it. I'll let you guys know if he's in it or not. <laughs> we watched something. Uh, uh, what was it with Justin Smith? Uh, God, it's a movie. Uh, Steven Seagal dies immediately in the movie. Uh, God, it's like an airplane on the front of it. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Something Decision. I think it's something decision. Executive decision. Executive decision. Executive decision. Maybe that's it. Uh, what? Yeah. I just guessed. Uh, executive decision. Yes. Kurt oh, wow. Russell too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, but uh, in that movie, it was a fun movie. Uh, Steven Seagal's in it, and so you're watching it, and like, it's like supposed to be this. You know, you're like, all right, well, Steven Seagal's in it. In the beginning of it, I mean, I guess I'm ruining it, but I mean, I'm the only one that hasn't seen any movie ever. <laughs> this is from 1996. But he dies like that, like immediately. You right know? away. And you're almost, and the whole time you're kind of like, and so I didn't know any of this. And like, you know, Justin's not telling me this. And so I'm going, like, I'm waiting for him. Like, well, he's probably coming back, right? Like, he's going to be back a lot. Like, There'll he, be flashbacks. Got, or this, something, he's the yeah. biggest star in the world at right. this. How do you get, like, and so people went crazy about it because they were like, how are you going to kill off a guy that, the guy that would sell the movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think he was on the, uh, he was on posters and stuff. Uh-huh. And, and then they just, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, all right. Casey Nelson. Uh, oh, that's one. <laughs> Jake Wood Watke. Mm, I bet that's right. Watke. Love the CVS updates and want to let Brian know Hazel is not alone. I'm a pharmacist, and one of the funniest prescriptions I've ever filled was Prozac for a dog named Twinkie <laughs> with the directions, take one tablet as needed for thunder. <laughs> Dogs take human meds all the time. But their different phobias requiring medication is always a good laugh. There you go. Yeah. I appreciate everybody being – there's a few people who messaged me. They said they had something similar. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, that's nice. Doesn't that go against some sort of feel, uh, confidentiality uh, thing? With That's true for Twinkie? Yeah, for Twinkie. I don't think that you're supposed to – That is a great to, point, Greg. You know? Don't they don't have an oath or something? I don't think like HIPAA laws? HIPAA is what I'm trying yeah. to say. I don't yeah. think it's in my business that Twinkies get. I, n- neither do I. I man. think Twinkies at home watching this <laughs> going – well, I don't. Yeah. Son of a gun! I don't appreciate that at all. I tell you what, I, I'm not scared of thunder at all. Bring it on! Yeah, yeah. I thought that was between me and you. Yeah, the thunder thing. I guess, yeah. Hey, I have he calls him Jake. Hey, Jake, yeah. I talk to you for a second. Uh, am I crazy? Or are you sweating out to the world that I have a fear of thunder? <laughs> Am I crazy? Is that, what, is that what I heard? I come in there. I don't come in with my owner. I come in alone. I don't cause a big scene. I wait. I do everything right. And then you just blat around. Uh, I have an update on uh, now Eleanor. That's my daughter, not my dog. She and I take the same reflex medicine. <laughs> oh, oh, she needs it? Like a uh, Prilosep? Prilosec type stuff, or well, it's it's uh, it's not called that, uh, but Rolades. <laughs> well, I went to my uh, new CVS, yeah, and I picked was it up. nice and fancy? Could you? Now how long a, did it take you to find the pharmacy? It's it's in a Target, so oh, they don't well, do, I mean, they don't do everything. You were probably did you walk around? <laughs> I mean, you're whoa. It, it took a while. <laughs> it took he just comes in and they go, sir, you're not even through the gate yet. And t- he's like. He's just in the front area with about those the checkout line. Yeah, but there's like a bank and like a eyeglasses person, eyeglasses haircut. <laughs> He's just over there, like, what? Is this? I didn't know they built a new mall over here. <laughs> it was fun because we stayed in the car with the baby, and I went in, and then they had baseball cards over on the side. Oh, yeah. So oh, me man. and all the twelve year old boys were elbowing each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that card. got mentioned. By security, <laughs> that's low profile uh, shelving there at uh, CVS, right? Uh, low profile shelving, you know, if you go to Walgreens, you, you can't see yeah. over, whereas you can see the whole store yeah. mm-hmm. at, at uh, CVS. Oh, that's true. Which, um, if you're like me and you live where you grew oh, up, oh, like you walk in, you can see, you can see the back of the store. That is true. Why yeah. is yeah. that? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it was a choice. Um, I was in the sort of retail business for a while before mm-hmm. I did comedy, but uh. Yeah, they they are the only ones that do that in the pharmacy chains. Like Walgreens, you can't see aisle to aisle. Yeah. Um, but if you live in the town where you grew up, and uh, you know maybe you run into like, you know, like you see somebody from high school, you don't really want to 
yeah. you know, really hang out with or whatever, which, you know, most of the time I, I enjoy seeing people. But if yeah. there's somebody, you can, you know, at Walgreens, you sort of duck behind the aisle. But yeah, if, yeah. if you're at CVS, like, CVS. word up! <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a guy in the back. <laughs> I like that's where all your... High school buddies are now hanging out at the yes, CBS friends, pharmacy. Friends, friends, friends. <laughs> Look who's back. <laughs> you go in there buying like a back pillow. Right. <laughs> Compression socks or something like that. What do you need? You know? <laughs> you looking at some readers? <laughs> they got a good pair over here. There you go. War dog. <laughs> I never thought about the aisles, though. Yeah. That is true. I yeah. picture it. You walk in. Yeah. It's all like, hey. You, 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 yeah, you, you can see the, whole... the pharmacy in the back right away mm -hmm. at a yep. CVS. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you still get photos developed, Brian. I feel like yeah. <laughs> at a CVS. No, but we just bought a photo machine for where if you take pictures with your phone and then you yeah. look it up and print it out for my mom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Cool. that's yeah. cool. I and thought you were calling a camera a photo, a photo <laughs> machine. Yeah. 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 So you got one on your phone too, yeah. Brian. I don't know if that's I showed cool, you that man. yet. I have to duck behind a curtain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poof. <laughs> yeah. There I like those frames that are like where you can you could send it and it just keeps showing pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I think that's good. We got one of those for my mom where we can all send pictures to it remotely, yeah. all the yeah. kids. And yeah. it yes. just sits. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you just text cool. it to them or something? Mm -hmm. yeah. You just text it to a number. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But my mom wants something fixed. Like, she doesn't have a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at church, when she wants to show off the baby, Gail yeah. has a smartphone. So they all have to go to Gail's phone to yeah. look at it because she's the only one. Oh, yeah. But now we've printed off some photos and she carries them on her. And it, it, she looks like a slot of him as magician. Yeah. You, you mentioned the baby. It's yeah. just there somehow. Yeah. And she yeah. has them showing yeah. them. Wow. So wow. it's good for her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think she ever thought this was good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, would, I mean, I think every, that's what I do. I go, <laughs> you baby, baby. I go, God, have you seen this? <laughs> and I'm like, we, no one ever thought this was happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Colin Anderson. Uh, I think it needs to be clarified. Dustin said it, but quietly. Pescatarian sounds a lot more like Presbyterian than Episcopalian. Big fans of the show. Gives me a great chuckle each week on my commute. Thank, thanks for all you guys do and uh, think and think you do. Oh, thanks for all you guys do and think and think you do. What? I, I don't know. Just, I think that was a shot. Yeah. It's, it's it might take, be. Take a shot. Uh, yeah. Es Episcopalian. I get what he's saying. I say, thank you for all you guys do and think and think you do. Like we do think. Hmm. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Interesting way to say that. Yeah. I'm going to have to disagree on the whole point of the message there. Oh. I yeah. think pescatarian sounds a lot more Episcopalian. I don't know. Presbyterian, Pescatarian. There was a few people that commented, though, that sounded more like Presbyterian. I can see because it starts with a P. It starts you off down that road. And so it's hard to get back <laughs> off. You know what I mean? A Pescopalian yeah. is like, no one's going to even think of those together. You would think P to P. Or maybe you say a Pescatarian, then that has the same rhythm as Episcopalian. Epis yeah. I'm a Pescatarian. I'm a Piscopalian. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. It's got yeah, the yeah, same yeah, rhythm. Yeah. 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 That Look, does. I mean, I'm, we think outside the box, too. <laughs> yeah. And think we do, dude. <laughs> All these cows going around thinking of fishing. <laughs> uh, are one of you guys a uh, pescatarian? No. Uh, no one even really knows. I forgot. I already forgot what it all that means. Fish. Yeah. 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 Just, just fish. Just means fish. Mm. No, I thought it was. Uh, We're talking about Catholics just eating fish on Fridays during Lent. Oh, yeah. And pescatarian. It means you're a fish. You come from fish. <laughs> Something uh, like that. Yeah. yeah. So this is not a. I think that's what Presbyterian. It's not is. a smart podcast, Greg. Uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Right in. I mean, how blown away we were by the CVS thing is. <laughs> go what? That's ah, it's a, it's a only fun. really useful piece of knowledge I have. <laughs> it's well, a pretty good. You're one. killing yeah. it so far. Oh, yeah, thanks, so man. Far. Yeah. Uh, now on the this is Laura. This is she puts Saving it all. Paper. One, I mean. <laughs> It's a good thing, but I just it does it every everything I look at. I'm like, well, where's the? Oh, it's got, I gotta, I gotta, this, the I two sides. I'm stuck this on side, that. And I go to this side, and I gotta go there to finish it. I mean, Laura tries to print. It's all blurred over each other, and I'm trying to read. Like, and she's like, "Well, we only used one sheet of paper for yeah. a book." Uh, 
this is the book's comments. Uh, Jeff J. Snyder will never know whether Bumblebee would have called out ju- called out Justin and Nate, who both said photogenic memory instead of photographic memory. But we do know it didn't phase <laughs> elite education Weber one single bit. Yeah, you didn't care. I think I could spin that. Yeah, when you, photogenic memory, it's just like your memory looks so good that you yeah. can. T- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can see it so well. It's like it, it, it in your mind. It would almost be like you're like I only remember good looking people. <laughs> yeah, or you remember yourself <laughs> yeah. as looking better than you. That's how. You, did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's how you would. You know, I got a photogenic memory, and you're so if someone ugly shows up, and you're like, "Hey, what's your name again?" <laughs> yeah. And you're like, "No, we've met a." You go, "I don't have a photogenic memory." <laughs> yeah. I only remember and then, like, <laughs> good looking photogenic good looking. people. Oh, yeah. come on, man. people. And then. <laughs> And then, like, a good-looking dad shows up, and you stay. <laughs> More dog. More dog. <laughs> now he goes, I never met that guy. I just remember him. <laughs> the one where you remember yourself looking better than you actually did, if there's a word for that, for uh, I know some comics that uh, remember sets going a oh. lot better than oh, they did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, murdered. Dude, yeah, murdered. Dude, murdered. Yeah. You're like, were you? <laughs> Where, where, what room were you in? Yeah. I, usually, a, well, I was going to say, I feel that way. I think I have a great set and I record it and then I'll go home and listen to it. I'm like, God, it didn't sound as good as I remembered it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, you're literally the thing he's talking about. <laughs> so, should we call it a Bates? I mean, it's literally. Batesogenic. Uh, Batesogenic. Yeah. Batesogenic. Then it goes, how'd it go? Went great. Yes. I killed. It sounded like then a, I listened an to arena the camera. In there. <laughs> then I was like, well, let me go back and watch it where I put my camera in the thick of all the people and it sounded worse. Worse than I thought. It's not like you're like, well, where's the camera? Was it outside or something? You're like, no, 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 no. I had my biggest fan holding it and filming it. And it just was nothing. I thought I remember them standing. Yeah. No one stood. That's a scene. A lot of walking in the bathroom. The Batesogenic, though, is he's the guy that. I mean, you, you at some point admit that it didn't go very well. I know some right, guys right. that even if they heard it, oh yeah, but no, no, murdered. Yeah, murdered. <laughs> I don't murdered. think it ever sounds as good as you think on video. It never, yeah. it never, you, you never. It is. I'm making fun of it, but it's hard to when you go back and listen to it. It's it's just a different feeling. Yeah. You're there. Then when you go back to hear it, and you have like a camera in the back. It's That's like, right. you know, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no, I do agree. It's uh, I don't listen to them. I've never listened to set because really, it's like yeah, it's I, I tried and I just don't. I'm getting maybe a little better about it now, but I mean I'll have them rec- every time you know you somewhere and they're like they can record here and you're like all right yeah record it let me and I that that link will delete every time. And yeah. Go quick. yeah, I don't want to watch it. I, I listen yeah. to almost all of them, but yeah. I don't want to watch it. I could I think I would be better watching. Really, I think so. It's hearing, it's, yeah, it's like almost like too much in your head when you just hear. If I'm watching, I know it's like I'm, there's at least a disconnect. <laughs> and then maybe if I'm listening, it's like too much like, all right. This guy, Ron Morey, who uh, was a comic when I was first starting out, uh, he was really funny. And he told me this trick. Uh, he said, listen to your set, but do it while you're washing the dishes or uh, something where you're not thinking. Oh, yeah. And he said, you know, you know, on the internet or driving. Yeah. I, I drove yeah. a lot back then. And he said, you'll start to get used to your voice a little bit more. And, oh, that's you know, good. And it, it was really helpful for me. Yeah. When, um, because you, I just didn't sound natural back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, – That's a, that, that that is a good way to do it. I mean, people listen. I have always had trouble with it just because I think it's the way I – tell a joke is like it's it's always a little different and not and it's not like the joke changes but it's like the way i get into it the way i I transition like there's like little things that make it seem different and so sometimes there'll be a line here and there like i mean he'd always be like basically like well you didn't say this one way this time but it's like that way would just go away from me and then it's like and then i'd be there'd be a new way i'm saying it no i think that's part of yeah what's really been good for you you yeah. always sound organic like it's like yeah there's a, well you get yeah. like you're doing so many shows you just get you end up like being like you're trying to mess with it almost too much which could be not a good thing but oh yeah man i've, I've yeah I've, i represent yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just getting up going let's try to shake this whole thing up i was thinking like i switched my order 
up this past uh, couple runs. And because I was like, let me try this. I tried one new way. It went really good one night. I tried it again another night. And it did not. And then I switched up some other stuff because I was trying to like fit things differently. Like, you know, I'm, I mean, everybody does, but I look, I look, it's all a puzzle. And so you're all just like, here's this chunk about my parents or my wife, you know, and, or here's like the kind of miscellaneous chunk, chunk. And so I was like, let me try to mix it all up. And I mix it all up. And I mean, I lost so much time. Like I did it. I mean, I was probably hitting like usually around an hour. Yeah. And then, uh, or I even get to 63, 64 and stuff like that. And then, uh. I did it, and I was like, one night I'm doing it, and I know like my wife chunk is roughly 20 minutes, and uh, and I look and we have a I have a clock up there, so it's, I'm at 30 and I'm about to get into the wife stuff, and I'm like, well, this is not. I go so, I was like, I don't know if I'm with it's got to go great for me to get to 50, 50. Now. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so then I had to add stuff, and like I but I just told some stories that like I not some new stories that I've I necessarily not gonna put in this new hour, but I was like that I've already thought of. And so I was like, well, let me just – I added like a couple long story, you know, that I was able to get to 60. But it was – I was right. like, God, dude. And you're like, I swear I was getting to 60 That's four minutes with – Horribly 67. disappointing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The worst. <laughs> it's the worst thing you know, ever. <laughs> I mean, where did this stuff go? Am I? And you're like, am I forgetting like the, um, my act? Yeah. Like you get up there and you're like, you forgot about the 40-minute car bit. You're like, God. <laughs> that's what you're – that's all you're hoping? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, ne- it's like, never that easy. Oh, it's God, that's right. <laughs> that's all I had to do yeah, is that thing. That's all I had thing. to do is that? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Remember your grocery store thing is like uh, 35 minutes and you call back and close on it, stay in ovation. <laughs> That's yes. what I'm. Yes, <laughs> that is all right. Yeah. It's a solid bit. I love telling it. I just forgot it this time. I have that now because now you got to try to do. I mean, people like I'm a. It, it's like I mean, I do like sixty. Uh, I've done sixty eight, sixty four. I'm in that range, and uh, I'm trying to get myself uh, to get eventually get to seventy five. I don't know if I will this before this next special comes out, but like the next special is like, I want to be doing like 75 minutes, 75. Just, yeah. And then cut it to an hour when I shoot. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying like when you're doing live shows, right. It's like really just getting to okay. 75. I mean the, it's, I know like some of the, the bigger places you go and stuff like that. It's like, I think you need to be up there a little more. And then, uh, but it's a hard thing. It's hard. You know, some guys can just, they can go do 90 minutes. Yeah. And then I'm just like, how? I don't know how to do that. No, I, I it's mean, it's hard to do. I'm doing old material if I'm doing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so it's like, I don't know how to, it's like stretches, you know, because you want it to still be tight. That's the thing, is I still want to be very tight. So I don't know. It's hard to be super tight for 75 minutes, but maybe there's a, you know, but if you. Yeah. Especially some of the guys, like you know, the joke guys. I don't know how they get to. It. I don't. They well, I don't think they can. I, I think that's an hour. I mean, I don't know yeah. how much a straight joke teller comic is. I don't think you could go that long. Like it's, I don't either. It's and I'm not saying an hour is usually good. It's you know, but if you even got seventy minutes, like even if it was like you know, that I think that's good. Like, but I mean, I I think it's just where I think it'll be the next stage of where I'm after this special is I'm starting to think about that. Like how can 75 I 75 minutes? 70, yeah. 75 minutes. How can I get up to, you know, just, and it's just, you you know, you become a little different of a comic of just stuff's maybe a little bit longer, but it's like, I want to keep it as tight as I can keep it. You know, mm-hmm. that's the, the tightness is the thing that's, cause sometimes people can do that, but they're not tight. I heard no. a joke this weekend and you're like, this joke should be, two minutes and he makes it five and you're like well this should be two yeah and it's a very funny joke but it's like you gotta suck the life out of that thing man that would it would be an amazing two minute joke and it's like kind of you're over it on a five minute joke yeah yeah because yeah. it's just like and you can tell that like that's probably your best joke and so you're trying to stretch it out doubling down on you're it doubling because you would pushing all it. the chips in on yeah, that yeah. yeah 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 well you have such great yeah. checkoff points so in the joke is like he's got such big like pops that it's like there's probably like three four like big laughs and so the time in between those laughs it's like you can because you know those laughs those laughs are solid right like they're not going to go away they're not they're not fake they're very real because oh. it's a very funny thing that he's talking about and I don't want to say it because I don't uh, but it's it's I could see 
it, but it's like he knows it and just then it's like trying to like play it out Surf too much in, in the between. middle yeah, 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 yeah to yeah. get the time up and you're like yeah man but that joke would either be you're going to walk out on a stand ovation or it's going to be just a slow kind of build that's a very good joke but then it's like you gotta yeah gotta ring that out god that just brought back awful memories and when you said you know those laughs are there yeah when i remember when i first was I got some feature gigs on the road before I should have been doing it. And, you know, you go in and you're like, all right, I don't, I don't have 30 minutes back yeah. then. I, oh, I yeah. don't have it. Yeah. But I do have these six giant bits that always kill. Yeah. And I did some gig in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I was through all six of them in like 10 minutes. <laughs> and, and they didn't do well. And yeah. I was like, if, if you didn't like that, man, you're yeah. really not going to like it. Yeah. yeah. Those were the hits. Yeah, those, were, those were for sure going to kill. <laughs> those were, those days, those days, I remember. I remember I had all those days too, like where it's like you, for, you just think, that's the stuff that you got to go learn. That's why it's like experience is everything because – you you get put in that position to be like now look you can still now have crowds that like they don't laugh you know like you have a show and you're like well this one they were laughing so long and loud and so i had to pause a lot more and then you get in a, another venue and you're like well they're a little bit tighter they're laughing they're laughing but it's not as long it's not as usually uh so it's like all your time shrinks up and uh it's funny but you got to learn how to do it because back because when you do it you have nothing and you're like you just threw this material. You learn that you're like, whatever amount of time you have, you have half that. Yeah. I don't know what I did. Because yeah. now, it's if that happens, you just throw in some old, I got enough material always to cover it. I, yeah. don't, know, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I, mean, it, it, I no idea. Because yeah. it was- just talk. Talking, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, probably terrible crowd. You know, yeah. the crowd work from a place of weakness is never a good thing. <laughs> <Yeah. crowd work. laughs> <laughs> where you have to have it like, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. it's great when yeah. they like you but when they yeah. don't you know what that is very true <laughs> i had it well on the crew I, I might have told the story on a cruise ship uh i i like did it where you know you gotta do did i have talked about the cruise ship uh on this or i don't know it's i, I think so it's a real bad cruise. bomb of yours yeah, yeah. I bombed and like so you have to do you know like two clean sets two dirty sets i don't even have dirty sets but it's uh but then they that then one night I was like I'm gonna do a best of of all that and then everybody's been to every show so I'm like they've heard everything and I mean I'm at you know five years in you're like I don't even I'm barely being able to do an hour barely yeah and uh, so and there each thirty minutes and I had to do crowd work and it's from a week's and that I never <laughs> yeah. thought of it why it went so bad because it was from a week place yeah from a place of weakness it doesn't no matter what they said yeah, yeah, i was yeah. like oh that's cool like a guy i'm like, like what do you do the guy goes i work on oil rigs and i'm like you i should be able to talk about that for 40 yeah, that's a good minutes one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and i'm like that's wow yeah. man that's cool and then i'm like what about you and i just keep i just move on it's just a survey yeah yeah, yeah i'm just asking so that's, that's what great everybody that's great. Yeah. Well, the, the older comic uh typically uh, you say something after when yeah. they tell you the joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Typically, you comment on, oh, I thought, yeah, I thought I you thought. just asked. <laughs> and it was, it was coming from a place of wheat. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. so. You made fun of me when I did the comedy catch in Chattanooga, and the guy up front was wearing an Auburn shirt. I was yeah. Like, you Auburn fan? He's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. I've done that. Man, yeah. I've been that guy. Yeah. Yeah. What a moment. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? that you don't know room? what this guy's going to say, man. Yeah. This guy's a loose guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is Talk that? about what you're wearing. <laughs> Is that, what is that, Tommy Hilfiger? Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> this guy's a maniac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sit up front. <laughs> Don't sit in the splash zone. Yeah. Yeah. Bates, Bates will, get will come you. out. They take come you on a wild ride, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he just talks about what you're wearing. <laughs> He goes, does he make fun of it? You go, no, huh. no, it's not his style, man. No, it's that's, not his style. That's, not, that's not what Bates does. He said he, he said he wished he could afford it. That's what he makes the person feel bad. He's like, God, I'd love to be able to buy an awesome shirt like that one day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, Daniel Dwiggins. When the guys were talking about five fireworks nate said july's in the middle so you're always around it and aaron and justin didn't say anything about it 
I know the calendar episode was quite a while ago, but we might need a part two soon. Part two soon to remind everyone how time works. <laughs> uh, Do you understand how well, that doesn't make a lot of sense? I don't. The July is in the middle. Well, we talking. You were making the argument how these fireworks stores stay open. Yeah. If yeah. it's only July Fourth, whatever. And, and Nate was said, "Well, yeah, but July is kind of in the middle." But that didn't make any. So I think what Nate was saying is you got July in the middle, you got New Year's at the end, so you're always leading up to a yeah. firework event. Yeah. That was that was what he was trying to say. Oh, okay. Well, they he said a few people commented that you just said July's in the middle, as if to say <laughs> once July fifth hits, it's not going to be another year, no matter when it falls on the calendar. You're always kind of in the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think th- I'm at the, mi- the middle of the calendar. Uh, if you think of stuff as the calendar year, it's like you're. It's always in the. It's you're always you, you're so focused on, you know, after New Year's Eve, which firework. Even if you take that away, yeah, you go, you know, January, and you're like, well, July Fourth is the next big celebrity, so you're always thinking about fireworks. Then after it happens, you want to buy them because they're cheap, and so you're like, I'll save them for the next year or something. Okay. And then it's like, then you get caught up with Christmas, and then <laughs> once Christmas is done, then you're like, God, is it? I gotta start buying fireworks. <laughs> and so it's always it feels like it's it's always in the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why they stay open. So it's just year round. But the New Year's Eve thing makes it sound more better. Yeah. Uh, I should stick with that. (laughs) Feast for thought. Reading is like any other skill. If you don't do it enough, you can't expect the same results as someone who practices it all the time. Hmm. You were saying how it was hard to read and concentrate, which I totally agree. Yeah. But they're just saying it's just like anything. You got to practice it and get Hmm. better at it. Should be a colon there instead of a comma for Hmm. that first one. Hmm. Hmm. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Facebook, thought writing is like your, any other skill. Yeah, you as know, a reminder, uh, get your colon check, everybody. Uh, <laughs> it's that time of year. It's always uh, it's always in the middle. Uh, <laughs> right in the middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Ems. In regards to the book episode, I thought you guys might be interested in the... Huh? I thought you... It's probably Corey Iams. Oh, Corey Iams. That's the uh, Iams? pet food people, right? Iams. Yeah. Oh, Iams. Oh, this yeah. is old money. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the book episode, I thought you guys might be interested in the Mariko Aoki phenomenon, which is the urge to defecate that is suddenly felt after entering bookstores. People claim that when they walk into a bookstore, the smell of books make them have to instantly go to the bathroom. So I looked this up. This is a real thing. They think the smell of the print, the ink, and the paper makes – it's like a laxative, and people have to go to the bathroom more mm. often. So exactly what this guy said. Uh, well, I feel like I brought a couple of extra tidbits yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the conversation. The smell of books Don't make take them that. have to go. Yeah. So basically – Ask him what he's wearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, that a, was that a folk hat? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. He got uh, you, man. He got, okay. Yeah. okay. He Boom, got, roasted. He got me. Boom, roasted. Next. <laughs> well, what I think is this is uh, Pavlovian in the sense that you, a lot of people read on the toilet. Mm-hmm. Right? So yeah. you get around books, your brain's going to reverse huh? engineer that and think, we need yeah. to be on the you toilet. You're kind of talking all about the same you know, thing. I feel like I've walked into a stall. I heard two men, y'all both talking about this and stall next to each other. And I was like, I can't do this. I it would have the opposite effect on you. Yeah, the opposite. I go, I can't I go for weeks. Goes, well, that makes a lot of sense. You're like, hey, boys, why don't we get on out of here and have this conversation? Y'all both in here. This book's been flagged. Some people are so comfortable when they go to the, like, they just, uh-huh. you know, like you can just, there's no. I was at a Love's truck stop this weekend. There's a guy in the stall. Just on speakerphone with like his insurance company, yeah. just like running errands on the yeah. phone. I uh, go, everyone can hear this. Dude. Yeah, he's like, my policy number is three four three. He's in the bathroom. The fact that they don't think of the consequences, like just yeah. the embarrassment. I, you know, yeah, I've, I've, a lot. Of, some people call you in the bathroom. I won't. I'll do whatever. I can to make you not think. I, I I will never talk if I'm in the bathroom. Yeah. But like, I don't even want to be in my bathroom. Sometimes it can be echoey. And then like, so even if you're just in your house and you're like, I don't know, you could be brushing your teeth and I'm yeah. just walking through my bathroom. I try to like, I'm a crazy person, but it's like, I overthink, you know, because yeah. yeah, I mean, you just, I've heard that too. People get on the phone. You're like, you wouldn't be in a public stall on speakerphone. <laughs> Do you lift your feet off the ground so they can't even see that you're in there? Uh, well, then somebody no. will barge in. No. Well, if it's locked. I can sometimes put headphones in just because it's like, 
I want to just not hear anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could almost do that when I walk into. I could do it if I go pee in the bathroom. I should probably do that more. That'd probably help. Put headphones in. Yeah, just have something playing so it's like I'm just in my own world. Because otherwise, you just get you know. I stand there, then then I get surrounded by two guys because they their whole instinct is to be next to a body, <laughs> and then so and then it fans out that way. And no matter where you're at, you're like. Uh, th- there's no one in here now there's there's four there are, there's only four people here but they're all next to me and you're like what happened here <laughs> just like, brian walks up was that a vanderbilt hat yeah <laughs> would you go to vanderbilt looking over he's tiptoeing to look over the stall thing what is that is that vanderbilt? like wilson on uh home yeah, improvement. Home improvement. <laughs> you see the top you just see what is that? Is that a vanderbilt shirt you got on Am I shirt yeah yeah hmm <laughs> Would you rather have partitions on either side of you, but the two guys are beside you, or they're further away but no partitions? I probably have partitions. Thank you. My good. my the the golf course I go to had, doesn't have partitions, mm. and it's it's terrible. And I don't know why that you're like they can't be expensive. I almost <laughs> should go. Well, I'll look into it. <laughs> the Nate Bargatze partitions. I would like. You know what? I should buy them, and then I just have my name on them. Nate Land. <laughs> Listen to Nate Land. <laughs> <laughs> just having it like a gas station, like a video that plays the podcast just on it. Oh yeah, man. But because it is like you want to go. This you, you're like, hey, just put legends at Vanderbilt. Like you're like, just put partitions in the. Come on, what are we it doing? Would change my life. Yeah, you know. And these old men going there, they don't care. Yeah, they Maybe don't that's care. Oh, that is. Yeah, yeah. But they, but it's uh, it's gonna be young people leading this revolution. <laughs> yeah, think. but you're like, just just don't just do so, just throw us a bone, you know. Here, it's like, what are we we're horses? Oh, old guys at <laughs> athletic events is that's their time to shine. Time to, you know, <laughs> they I don't care. As a kid, I remember just hearing those guys. In the bathroom, yeah. You don't buy beer, you rent it. You know? <laughs> yeah. there's, like, there's like fifty of those, like those. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a great. Yeah, there's like fifty of those, yeah. and I'm like, I'm, yeah. hey man, I'm nine. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. like uh, he hit you. Yeah. You don't buy beer, you rent it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, your dad laughs, and all these old men laugh. Yeah, and like what is wrong with y'all? you are peeing one, in a trough. Another one was. Uh, I guess there were blue laws back when I was a kid and you couldn't buy beer on Sunday, but they could sell you what they called three, two beer, which was 3.2% alcohol and it versus what it's, it was like low alcohol beer. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I remember, you know, being in the bathroom of the three, two beer, you know, which means that, you know, they're drinking <laughs> yeah. way more of it, yeah. to, you know, to get drunk. So yeah. but I'm like, yeah, I'm 11. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Stupid Sunday. <laughs> Bailey Scott, I am mind blown that Aaron's website is a fake MySpace with explanation. I didn't bring the fake MySpace. <laughs> when I first started listening to the podcast, I visited his site, and I was so confused on why all, of all his, all platforms he had my, uh, MySpace. Now that we are all in on the joke, that's hilarious and very creative. You definitely fooled me. Yep, he's got a fake message. I think it's going to do a lot for him. Uh, oh, that's I wonder great. how many gigs you've lost yeah. because they, like, this isn't real. I can't find his website. Uh, that's your site, man? Probably a lot. Yeah, that's, that's great. That wow, that's, that's, really, that's yeah. really cool, man. The people that get it, get it. And then <laughs> other 98% God, of people. God, that's funny. Because it looks just made, but it is it is good. I got a top eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. Nate Land's yeah. on there. Tom. And what does that go to? If you go to Nate Land, I think this takes us to the, the website. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, he did it all. He's got the comments. Oh yeah, the fake ads, man. Oh, those are. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, oh yeah, and you have a fake ad, Dairy Queen. Oh yeah, 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 I got fake ads all throughout the site. It is a good website. Yeah, thanks. It is good. It might be time to get something real. I don't know. I don't know. I make fun of it, but I could. You, you got all the contacting stuff there. I got all the info you need. For yeah. me, this was like this was a way to to list this stuff without feeling like I was being obnoxious. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. You will you be uh, like a. Uh, no, I get that idea. Anytime I have to talk about myself, I have to cloak it with irony in some way. So I'm just like. Yeah, yeah. It. That's a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. That's you know what that goes away. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I think it does. Yeah. It goes because it's like you. I, you'd always do that. My bio. It might still be like that. Mine was like a. You know, I wrote it with like this idea of like. 
did I perform for the troops? It's like, who mm-hmm. cares? You know, no, of course you did. Yeah. Probably. Like, because you feel that kind of thing. And then later on, though, you just end up, you're like, you know, people are there for, they want to just know this information. <laughs> yeah. and, you, and so you learn to like, and you almost get a little disconnected from it because you're, I, I'm not, you know, my website is like, you're just not building it on your right. own. I need to have somebody else write my bio for me. Yeah, so that's so what that, you have to do. Yeah, you yeah. do one of those things like Nate did, and then you go do a corporate gig. Yeah. And they read, read your it. bio word for word without yeah. the irony. <laughs> did I perform for the troops? Yes. <laughs> but so did you. <laughs> Why don't you have the AI thing write your bio for you? Oh, I should. Yeah. I'll do that later. I'll change it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what that, yeah, because that'd be fun to see what that next week. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Come back Uh, next week with a new bio. And then, uh, wait, are we gone next week? Well, we're going to do next Uh, week's after this one. Yeah. Uh, So we we will do it next week. We'll do it. (laughs) And then, uh, yeah, that'd be good. But this this is good. This is a great, it is, I've I've made fun of it. I'm (laughs) correcting myself. It's a great way to do what you're talking about doing now yeah like is that kind of thing i don't know about that picture but (laughs) (laughs) you need to change that picture that i know i need new headshots that's an old picture i need new heads but just put a picture up of you on stage no one's taking a picture of you like the grand Ole opry or the i've got a couple yeah i thought at the time i thought this was a fun one that is fun but it's you know but i mean you've you've lost a lot of weight yeah, I'm a lot. Yeah. Bigger. I'm a lot bigger yeah. in that picture yeah. for sure. You're gonna show up and they're thought I was be killing like, it back then, though. I know, but now you're gonna show up and they're like, "I mean, this kid can't even." You're supposed to be tip over a <laughs> van. You're like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they look at you down. And you're like, I mean, what? Are you? Hopefully, get. I don't know if you can get a Prius over. <laughs> they need a guy that's gonna run up to a van like a football player, <laughs> and they go, "All right, uh, everyone." is so busy so it is easy to put all your time and energy on other people and responsibilities above your own mental health but for you to be great take the time to talk with someone if you're struggling we uh we can make you laugh but talk space can help you with a plan if you need to move to a better space may is mental health awareness month uh it is good it's talk about it you know you can feel alone out there you listen to these podcasts you uh, you you know and it's like you know i do it too when i do it with uh old 90s movies i watched or i watched this one movie escape plan uh and not bad and so but you have these things that take your mind away from stuff which is good but it's also good to go talk to someone because then you can set out a plan and like i don't know just get this stuff off your chest so you're not just you know it's not like the old days where it's like i mean you know you bottle it up we all i still do that we all still do it but it's like just you privately go talk to someone just so you know you're not crazy and that you're going through stuff that everybody's going through because uh, everybody's crazy. It's not you. Everybody else is crazy. Uh, so talk to someone. Consider this your permission slip to put your <clears throat> mental health first. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use promo code Nate during sign up to get $100 off your first month. That is $100 off at Talkspace.com. Promo code Nate. If someone relies on you for financial support, whether it's a new baby girl named Eleanor, an aging parent, or even a business partner, you need life insurance. You have all those things. (laughs) (laughs) I do. (laughs) Baby girl, aging parent, business partner. Which one of you is my business partner? Uh, uh, I don't think we're partners. (laughs) (laughs) We're probably closer to partners, right? (laughs) Well, because of you, Aaron, I need to get life insurance. Typical life insurance gets more expensive as you age, so it's smart to get a policy sooner rather than later. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. Click the link to, on this in the description or head to policygenius.com slash Nate and answer a few questions. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees or sell your info to third parties. It has options that offer coverage in as little as a week or avoid unnecessary medical exams. Ooh, I like that. I've tried to get life insurance, and the medical exams usually ends it. Uh, <laughs> head to policygenius.com slash Nate to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. They come in, so you come in, they're like, a little last minute, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it under the wire. <laughs> <laughs>
Nate Land is also brought to you by Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. I took the Aaron Sorkin Masterclass. I got those videos. Aaron Sorkin, obviously, as we know, creator of the greatest television show of all time, The West Wing, and the greatest movie of the 21st century, the Social Network. Brian uh, took Steve Martin yep. Masterclass. Watch those videos. Lots of great stuff. You can watch it on your phone your browser, your TV, wide variety of topics like negotiation, anything from that to like bread making, anything you want to become a master in, log on there. They've got some stuff for you. Hundreds of video lessons. Whatever you're interested in, there is a master class for you. So check it out. Get unlimited access to every master class. And as a Nate Lane listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Nate. Now, that's masterclass.com slash Nate for 15% off Masterclass. And finally, saying goodbye to high-interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial independence. But the interest month after month can pile up and feel like a never-ending hamster wheel. That's where Upstart comes in. Folks, let's get to work with Upstart and get our personal finances in a good place. <laughs> with prices rising, it's time to not get caught up in a lot of debt. I know they've suspended student student loan payments for like a couple years now, but they're yep. coming back. So let's get a handle on this together. They know you're more than just your credit score, thank God. So instead of looking at your credit score alone, they consider other factors like your income, your employment, all kinds of great stuff. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between 1000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. Uh, all right. And, uh, like I was saying, I found something interesting about this. So, as I always said, with the ads, I know, like, we're doing, obviously, more than we did before. And like I've said before, I just want to say it again, it's like I'm aware of how many we're doing. I'm aware these are great things that we do and we do them with. And it is helping. This stuff does help build the Nate Land world that uh, I would like to build. So you're you're very much a help for that so when you go through these if you use these that's a big thing i'm not trying to you know i don't i want to i don't mean i have five so is is a lot but it's or four or five but it's but it's like this is all going to this world mm -hmm. and it's building stuff so just always remember that i'm aware of them i'm aware that you know people get annoyed with ads i'm mm -hmm. i'm not trying to take anything from you it's like we're doing this uh, and I always appreciate that. And someone that did so everything you do, I appreciate it. But then I saw something with Tristan about you when you edited uh, the ads into the podcast is when your baby was born. Yeah, someone I got told that. Yes, which is pretty crazy. It's so funny. So the your first and last thing when your baby was born, last before baby was us. And then you and your baby listened to the podcast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the next morning. The next morning. So Tristan's doing hard at work. Around a solo stove. Yeah, around a solo stove. <laughs> Company man. Yeah. I mean, hard at work was, I mean, in the thick of it. Yeah. Baby yeah. was born. How quick was the baby born to finishing the podcast? Oh, man. I uh, I was publishing the podcast around 7.30. Yeah. He was born at 10.56. Wow. So Whoa. Just, hmm. I mean, Three just hours. right there. That's awesome. Congratulations, man. Congrats. Nate called me the day before. That baby's uh, 15 now. Uh, <laughs> Nate called me the day before Eleanor was born, yeah. and I saw it. And I thought he's going to give me some fatherly advice. My, my, you know, first time and he's like, yeah. "Hey, uh, Vecchione's coming on tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> look up some stuff on uh, the diets." <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't that? think I knew you were, she was being born that day. Oh, I don't know for sure. My uh, yeah. my buddy, a uh, real funny comic, uh, Tommy Johnigan, uh he called me accidentally when he when Heather was about to give birth to their first child, and he called me. He's like, "I go hello." He's like, "Hey, uh, man, I didn't mean to call you. We're on our way to the hospital. Heather's uh, uh, Heather's water just broke, and we're going." And I, I go, uh, "Hey, man, I got a couple of bits I want to run by." <laughs> He's like, it took him a second. He's like. No, Greg, I don't want <laughs> I was like, I'll never 
get to do this joke ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it worked out perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to do it, and I was like, I, I got to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Uh, was that the day before? Yeah. But were you all at the hospital, or were you at home? I was at home. Oh, but y'all were getting her. She was in. You knew the time. Yes, exactly. We had a schedule yeah. time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you were just at home. <laughs> it's not like you were. It was like in the middle. I mean, he was doing it, and he was <laughs> maybe about to be delivered. <laughs> you didn't call him. Uh, I know, but he was working. Yeah, and so I called you to work. <laughs> but I guess you wanted that day off <laughs> <laughs> to go do stuff. Yeah. I don't know if I should Good. be calling to give you fatherly advice. Like, you give fatherly advice, I think, later. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's the, I've always said the baby, it's the greatest thing you could ever do is having a child. It's, there's nothing mm -hmm. like it. That's I've not really, that. that's not really that. advice, though. But that's it's for, like but a, that's but it's it's the joy that you're. It's not advice. What advice can I give you? Like, I don't know. Diapers is how you do a diaper. Like there's no advice. It's the idea that I always remember. It's the greatest thing that way. It's unreal, yeah. and there's nothing like it. And there's oh, just remember special. that. Yeah. that's advice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, well, I'm just, just I'm saying. I just say it's the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like so. Okay. That was advice. I didn't know. I'll, I'll call you if you want. I'll walk you through it. <laughs> if that's. Uh, I gave you a nice maternity leave. <laughs> you were off for however long. And Greg doesn't have kids, so no, you know, no, making no. him feel bad. No, Greg, I'm sorry, Greg. Yeah, wait, I'm sorry. No, bring that yeah. up. Yeah. Well, Greg, there's hope. So <laughs> yeah, Bates and I aren't too far apart, really. No, we're not. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. Can before we get into it, can I ask the glove update? Yeah, Steve Byrne got the glove. He brought it to me. I have it. I have my childhood baseball glove back. Wow. Where is it? It's it's at my house right now. I mean, how do you? How would you not bring it? Yeah, because I came. I f I was in Denver this morning. And I yeah. came straight here, so I didn't get a chance to grab but it. But how? Then why would we even? Why would we bring it up? I don't think no. Brian knew oh. that I didn't didn't have. Oh. It. Well, I just. So many people have asked. It is. Yeah, yeah. And we it's said good, it's good yeah, to follow yeah. up. We were going to update yeah. the next episode. Yeah, Two yeah, weeks from now, true. I'll have it. Oh God! I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even. I will. I'm not even impressed with the story. Yeah, oh, it's a great story. <laughs> now, a lot of people have commented that it was great till they realized you and your entire family went to school in Indiana, very close to where this was. Yeah, but I didn't bring my baseball glove from when I was eight to college. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, that's not where it was from. Maybe your brother at Purdue, or he took an eight year old's baseball glove <laughs> to college. All right. It's a. It's definitely a crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy story. Mm -hmm. I don't say you don't bring the glove. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't. I mean, like, I, I don't a chance, like a dude. plant. Just a, if you think about a show that we're creating, yeah. we're creating a show. I came straight for the airport, dude. To go, you know, uh, it's like uh, I got a tattoo uh, with Nate Land on it. Wow, dude, can we see it? I'd rather not. I'd rather not show you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, but I'm glad. Fine. I'm glad we said that because I I'm still getting a lot of messages. People offering to go grab it for me. Okay, and I need everyone to know it's been grabbed. He has it's it. back in my hands. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe go grab it from Aaron's house if, if people are listening. <laughs> I think that would be great if people could go actually. So maybe we could see it before uh, a month later. Oh, that's right. Last day of the podcast. Oh, there's that glove. Last Remember that story. <laughs> Steve Byrne went through all that trouble, <laughs> and you just, you know. I got this rock, too. I've been to show this. This is uh, uh, the Nate Land Podcast Rocks, Smooth Rock, uh, uh, young lady. Uh, I, I, want, I, th I believe her name is Sabrina. I'm sorry if that is not your name. I try to remember. I think it's Sabrina. You'll always be Sabrina to me. <laughs> uh, she gave us this. She she painted it and stuff. Very, That's really very cool. nice. Awesome. Uh, all right, this week, uh, uh, not don't touch it, Craig. Okay. And uh, fair enough. This, this <laughs> just between him and Sabrina, I got to yeah. straighten it up. Greg, yeah, sorry I mean, about that, man. Sabrina. I'm sorry yes. about that. <laughs> Playing it a little fast. Hey, what's and gay? I'm gonna get a message. What's Craig's problem? <laughs> go, I'll tell you. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, would, so, I mean, if I had a glove, I could kind of. Just, you could, yeah, <laughs> that's true. You could break it in. <laughs> God, I wish you had a glove. Yeah, me too. You man. know. Yeah. Uh, I just got Lincoln's uh, coat. Bought it at auction. God, dude, can we see it? No, ah, no, I didn't think y'all would want to see it. I didn't think. I didn't think you'd want to bring it. You know, I didn't think about showmanship. <laughs> you know, I only do it every night. You only literally flew to do showmanship to come back and not do showmanship. Isn't this showmanship? This is the glove. Yeah, 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 yeah showmanship. showmanship. Okay, yeah. you're right. Yeah. All right. 
don't know. Think, just ask him. Yeah, time. maybe care about the podcast. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll talk first and go. <laughs> Did you bring the glove? I'm gonna bring it up. <laughs> All right, my bad. Uh, so this week we're talking about Missouri. Uh, Greg mm. is mm. from Missouri. Yeah. Is it Missouri or Missouri? Uh, Missouri. If you're in sort of the uh, middle of the state, uh, you would say uh, Missouri. Uh, but middle yeah, state, you say Missouri. Yeah, you'd say Missouri if you're from uh, more of the rural area. But uh, if you're in St. Louis or Kansas City, you'd say Missouri. And you were in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in. St. I was born in Springfield. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, isn't that the Bass Pro Shop? Yeah. That is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where the Bass Pro yeah. Shop is. Man, they have like a um, a wildlife museum right by the bass pro shop it's been a long time since I, I went there but when i went it was like a missouri wildlife museum and just, the animals were alive yeah yeah they had a bunch a bunch of different that, now that's now they're dead <laughs> it, was, it, was that, it was that long ago you're yeah, like yeah they, they were they eventually yeah, yeah. died they go we'll just make it a museum yeah, yeah. you go yeah. Ah, that works more, yeah. yeah taxidermy at yeah. this point mm-hmm. but yeah it was you know it's all animals uh that you would find that are mm-hmm. indigenous mm-hmm. to missouri it's pretty cool and then you get to the end and there was a shark. And I just feel like this guy that, you know, the guy that started the museum had this like really pure vision. Like it's Missouri, Missouri. And then just people kept coming through. I, I want to see a shark. Where's yeah. the shark? Yeah. My, I brought my, my family up here. I'm paying 20 bucks a ticket. I want to see a shark. He's like, well, actually, sir, it's only Missouri. Like, no, no, yeah. no. I want to see a shark. Yeah. And then there's some moment where he's like, just, just put the shark. In. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, well, you need a headliner, just, yeah. and yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think y'all have a headliner. I think animal. we got. Come on, what is it? What do we got? Like black bears? I think uh, that's a. That's not a. You're headliner. saying that's not a headlining those animal? Are dime, those are dime a dozen. <laughs> those are all over the place. There's yeah. so much that in the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> wow. I mean, you can't even walk near it. Yeah. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah. You, need, you don't have a headliner animal. We got giant catfish in Lake of the Ozarks. That's, I mean, are you? If, what are you talking about? If it's about? a catfish as big as a Volkswagen, that's not a headliner? <laughs> if you get one as big as a Volkswagen. The, the, yeah. the rumor is down there uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the bottom of the- No, this is real. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Kathleen Madigan, she grew up down yeah, there yeah. by Lake yeah. of the Ozarks. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, she's the one that told me. The rumor is down there by the bottom of the dam, there's catfish as big as- Volkswagens. That's yeah. a, that's a headliner. That's a that's a like an arena act. That's I a, <laughs> I if you if you have that you don't need the shark. But <laughs> the problem is we, y'all don't we, have. We, we didn't have it. You don't have a headliner. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. And the shark. You think the shark wants to? The shark doesn't belong there. He knows this is a shark. <laughs> that's that's he sells out the club instantly. He yeah. Goes, I should be doing arenas now. <laughs> and he's got lost in the system. Yeah. And now yeah. he's like, where am I? Yeah. And they go Springfield. And he's like, what? Like, is that Illinois? Is this fresh is water. That, yeah. 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 Because, yeah. Yeah. He goes, why am I? I'm having trouble breathing. It's like it's like working in an old club that they smoke still. Yeah. You're like, yeah. they still smoke here. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we're describing my career pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so wait, why am I still doing this? <laughs> I, no, it's it's, but it is funny that I think if y'all you could one of your animals could be a headliner, but you need like a big like anaconda or something like. No, we don't have that. Man. Uh, black, I know black, black bear is kind of your thing. What's that? The black bear? That no, your? it's not even our thing, man. I mean, yeah. I think you know we yeah. got um, well Missouri mule is. Uh, you know that that's a thing, the Missouri mule, and uh, I, there was some beer, like a donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your state Missouri animal. Missouri mule, mule is a thing. Is that your state animal? Man, I don't. I think uh, it is. It might be. I would think it would be. Like I remember there was a Y'all beer got a headliners that there? might. You got a- I mean, you haven't seen these mules, Nate. It's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, I feel like they, they. I feel like that's who shows you around the museum. Like, you know, we have donkeys walk you around. You go, that's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> the the Missouri mule. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest with you. What state has a headliner as its s- state animal? I well, don't know. I mean, state. Florida's got gators. That's is a, that, a, that's, that's a, a headliner. headliner. That's a headliner. is that their state? Is that their Texas has those longhorn uh, cattle? That's a headliner. That's a headliner. You know, but California's I mean, it, got a grizzly bear. That's a headliner. That, that, grizzly bear. That's a, a big a grizzly. Sure. A grizzly bear is Alaska. Like a, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Any of the yeah. Um, a gray whale too. I mean, Cal- California. A whale is a headlining. That's animal. a big headline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. California's doing well. Uh, yeah. Georgia's just a deer, just roadkill. Yeah, I mean that's not even. Yeah, that's an open mic. You know, <laughs> a bison. Bison. Uh, bison. Kansas bison is. Bison is, is it needs it, to be big. It needs to be I big. I think they're all pretty big. Those, I know, yeah. but it needs to. 
Yeah, there should be a story with it. There better yeah. be. I, I'm I, telling you, Kansas has got a big enough bison. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, a moose is moose is everybody. moose is a, a, a moose, moose might be number one over all of them, just because you would you don't really get to see them up close, mm -hmm. and then if you saw one up close, and you'd be like, "This is crazy how big that thing!" Like you would be, you're marveled by how big it is. I heard you don't want to see them up oh, close. I no, heard moose yeah. are way uh, meaner than the than bears. Like you, you don't mm. want to be around a moose. Yeah, you don't want to be. Moose, that, yeah, there you go, Montana. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's the just, Missouri. That's, <laughs> You're saying that's not a headliner? Y'all decided, y'all decided, it looks like, oh, that's a picture from 95. I was like, y'all decided in 95, you go, I'm about to graduate high school. You're like, what do we do the mule? That's how long it took. Uh, I remember there was a beer my dad drank called Old Missouri, and it had a, a picture yeah. of that mule on there. I will say, for your animal, it's, yours would always be there. Like, it's a, it can yeah. walk a long way. Yeah. So, Missouri is always represented in the fact that these other animals die off. And you're like, well, who's even left? And you're like, dumb mule still here, yeah. and he won't because he won't he won't go away. Right, the dumb mule. That's, dumb mules that's, that's uh, you know carrying all your stuff. I was going to say it's yeah, the yeah, only yeah, state yeah, animal yeah. so far carrying luggage. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. say that yeah. it's the only one with a backpack. <laughs> uh, it looks like a nativity. It's not scene. sexy. It's not it's, uh, glamorous. No, no. But, but I mean, true. But utilitarian wise, yeah. It, it's it's an old man's animal it's like that he goes it's like it's like cargo pants for, like that he's, he just loves that it's like yeah you, you carry your stuff you put your phone in there i got i got my calendars right on that side like yeah ernie it does they don't yeah. look that good they though look good. He goes, well what, you, well, what need you, some water? <laughs> you need some water well let me go get my giant water bottle ask your grizzly bear to carry a water bottle and see what his attitude takes you New York Beaver. That's yeah. I mean, That's you don't. It, it, I need to see it work. That's North yeah. Carolina's got a squirrel, man. North Carolina squirrel is pretty That's weak. Embarrassing. That's weak. That is That's pretty weak. That's weak. Don't even. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Uh, Oregon claims the beaver too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of overlap. Lot of, Not that many well, animals, I, mean, I guess. Tennessee, gotta, Tennessee's a raccoon. So. Raccoon's a little fun, a little sneaky. <laughs> We're not, I don't, I, I, I don't want to defend it the same way you want. Rodent. You know what? <laughs> it's a rodent. <laughs> it gets into your trash. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, got character. I'll give it's you got that. character. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's going to happen around it. Yeah. One yeah. could be cool. One could be playing you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, raccoons are cool looking. They are. Yeah, they are. The hands uh, are really neat. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think we get a lot of sleep here. We got black eyes under, you know. Uh <laughs> So that 1995 yeah. for the mule, that must have been the year because that photo says 1971 and that yeah. wasn't taken in 1971. Man, we had other stuff going on. Yeah. We just didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have time. <laughs> yeah. We, at the end, he goes, it's like in a big meeting, they're going, we got to get Missouri. They go, we need a state animal. I don't do the mule for all like, Next thing. Missouri actually stopped. <laughs> and that's how the mule got. Florida Panther. That's a good. great one. Yeah, that's yeah. A good one, they got man. the great dolphin one. too. Manatee yeah. too, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're around yeah. water, you got some fun yeah. stuff. That's Hawaiian insane. monk seal. Missouri is landlocked. Yeah. So yeah. you just got a mule. Pretty, yeah. pretty, we got pretty a raccoon though. Raccoon's not. Lake. You know? Oh, you do. You got a lake, I guess. I'll if I you, get one of those yeah. catfish got, as big as a. Uh, that's, and then we're headlining, right? I think <laughs> your animal should be a catfish. Yeah. That would have been, you stand so, out. So the origin of the giant catfish myth, according to Snopes.com, is uh, there's some divers in the lakes. They had to rescue, uh, you know, it was an EMS crew, and mm -hmm. uh, they reported catfish so large that one of the divers was sucked into the giant bottom feeder's mouth only to be spat out. So that's sort of the origin of some of these urban legends of giant catfish yeah. wow. lurking at the bottom of the lake. And that was in 98. That was in 98 that was, was reported, yeah. Is noodling a big thing there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that, you your, is that your state activity? I, I don't know if we have one, but uh, it, it might be. Again, it's- New category. Um, is that your subjects in school? The thing what is- What do you got? I got math, reading, noodling. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a dichotomy. You have St. Louis and Kansas City, and yeah. then you have the rest of the state. That's yeah. probably a little bit more- I you have the, it, you have the two biggest rivers in the U.S. Missouri and the yeah yeah the, I should have worn my St. Louis uh, shirt. It's got like uh, the the our, our we have our city has a flag and it's got the two rivers coming together. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. with the French fleur de lis. It was founded by uh, the French. Yeah. yeah. So Missouri's an Indian word. Do you know what it means? No. He of the big canoe. 
<laughs> oh, it's probably something to do with the fur, uh, the fur traders or the uh, fur trappers at the I time. Yeah, I, don't well, know. I thought it had to do with the canoes. Well, I think the guys in the canoes were were out there. You know, I think you can buy a nice canoe at a big uh, oh, Bass is. Pro Shop. Yeah, there's I think. Yeah, there's oh, there's flag. Oh, that's yeah. very cool. Yeah. That's a good yeah. flag. Yeah, it looks like yeah. New Orleans, just because of that. Because of the fleur de lis, yeah, it's. But it's is that that's, that's an awesome flag. Fleur de lis. That looks yeah. like the top of a gate. Yeah. Top of a gate. Does that mean anybody else think of that? That pattern makes me think of like a a pole the, of the top of the pole yeah, of, like along a, the gate. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On like a chain yeah. link. No, no, like, like a, a link, fancy like house. Like cast iron. Oh, kind of yeah. yeah, like rich people. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Don't come, don't come over this. Yeah. yeah. Right. Don't come over here. I do like the flag. Thanks, man. You know that's cool, man. <laughs> we'll give you that. You guys, that no, you, yeah, that's that's fun, dude. I mean, I'm a fan of Missouri. Missouri well, flag's pretty weak. Those are bears on uh, there. Yeah, I, know I don't know. Bears. You got some bears. Yeah. What are the bears doing? You have yeah, a lot they're... of brown bears. You no. definitely would think it'd be like a different country. Like it's got, a, it's got a very fill. <laughs> yeah, of that. yeah, yeah like, it does. Uh, is it yeah. like? Is that like French's uh, France's flag? That's French's their color. Flag? <laughs> it's French's. That's yeah. French's. They have the same fr- flag. The same, right? same, uh, same colors. colors. Yeah. yeah. So y'all are a little more. Are y'all more French than New Orleans? Is you more French than people realize? Yeah, we are. I mean, the, it was uh, Augusta Shoto, and I can't remember the other guy. It was his father-in-law that founded St. Louis, and I think that was before anywhere else. Did y'all talk about that a lot at school? Like, how do you remember that? You just remember that? I did read it. I read. I, I got this idea during uh, um, COVID that I was gonna like maybe do like a one-man show about Missouri oh, yeah. or something. So oh, I read, that's fun. One book, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then yeah, I yeah. got onto another idea. But yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I did learn a, a little. A brief bit. history of yeah, a look, yeah, yeah a look yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. Do you know uh, why Missouri's called the Show Me State? I think it's because they, you know, it's. I think we're kind of uh, annoying to people where you know they would say. You know, this is the way things are, and the people in Missouri would be like, "Well, show me. I don't believe you unless you show me." I think uh, isn't that true? If that's true. Yeah, there was a congressman. I mean, I'm way on board with Missouri. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's two. The main theory is there's a congressman that said, "I'm from Missouri. You have you've got to show me. Like yeah. you can't just say it." And then there's another theory that some miners went to Colorado from Missouri and they didn't know what to do, so they called them the show me people. You had to show them every little thing to do. But the first, so they're theory. saying we're stupid. Yeah, the second yeah, one. Yeah, it goes yeah. two different ways. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm on board with both ways. <laughs> I think I fit very well in Missouri. Uh, yeah, fact, yeah it's, it's the worst mix. Yeah. It's a person that is obstinate and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think it might describe me. As a whole. Like, I need stuff to be shown to You're me. You're the show me comic. I'm the show me comic. <laughs> show me how to do it. And then after you show me, I go, how do I know you didn't really know how to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always question. yeah. Somebody takes the time to help you out, and then in the end, you're, you're uh, you question their you go. I don't yeah, know, man. Are you any good at this? I remember the World Series, the Cardinals, and the Royals, the Show Me series. Yeah, that was uh, eighty five. Heartbreaking. <laughs> that game six. That yeah, it was Don a, Dinkinger. It was, yeah, it was a we got. Uh, it was a bad call. It was uh, one of the worst calls in history. Do you know this? It's probably the no. worst call. In, I don't know. When was it? it, it uh, pull up the 1985 oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Game Royals six. and the Cardinals. Yeah. Game six, Cardinals were big favorites, right? Yeah, yeah. and we we, we were uh, we were winning that game. Yeah, and uh, I think it would have been the third out. Yeah, uh, the final out of the game, and uh, uh, one of their guys ran to first base, and uh, the umpire Don Denkinger called the guy uh, safe, oh. and he was definitely out. And uh, the guy was getting death threats for about 20 years. Yeah, and, uh, Don wow. Denkinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But people take baseball yeah. pretty seriously. Well, now the umps are a lot and better. Then, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, oh, you wow. couldn't review it? Yeah, yeah you couldn't review it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when they review it, it's like super obvious. They show a couple more there later yeah. on, better, better angles. I love Here's the, the thing. Here's the thing I need out. to admit. That, like, because it's like that Bartman thing with the Cubs. Like, Bartman... Remember the guy that t- – Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it started. We yeah. talked about it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, But after that, they had plenty of chances to win. That was yeah. game six. The next game, we could have fixed it all and yeah. won, but we got blown out. Yeah. Uh, we got killed in the next game. So, Well, it, it, it does like you lose the uh, – We're looking at it in slow motion. But here. I, under, I understand oh, – that's, that's by a long shot. Yeah. Pretty clearly yeah. out. Yeah. 
but I understand uh, this being more frustrating because it's an out versus Bartman's like it's a foul ball. Yeah, man. like you act like you don't even know if you you weren't even probably going to catch it. Like yeah. so, it's like for them to come unraveled. This I guess you could be. I could see becoming unraveled, and so that's but it. They screwed the up. World Series. They screwed up in this inning a couple yeah. times after that, like the Bartman thing. Yeah. Um, but they, I re- I remember what happened. Them. Have y'all won? Y'all won a World Series. Oh, we, yeah, we the, won in eighty two yeah. and Pujols, uh, and then they won in oh six with Pujols yeah. and in uh, an eleven with Pujols. Yeah. Um, but uh, I remember that game. I was at my girlfriend Lisa Canancy's house. Mm. I was oh, yeah, a Lisa. senior in in high school, and. Uh, her dad was a big Cardinal fan and her like uh, her mom's sister. So her aunt lived in Kansas city and uh, she called, you know, to kind of give him a little, she wasn't a real baseball fan. She was just yeah. a nice lady. She called to give him, you know, give him a little bit of ribbing, you know, like yeah. general yeah. fun, you know, <laughs> and he, st- he was like swearing at her over the phone <laughs> and she was crying. Yeah. And it was, like, it was that thing where like, she's like, Oh, and she got upset. Yeah. But he was yeah, like, I didn't know it was yeah. this serious. Yeah, it was I'm on his side on that. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'm probably on his side too. And the fact that I remember someone Vayner, Vayner yeah. lost him to shoot and that happened to me. And someone like called me and made fun of me. Oh, yeah. Or like, is that? And you're like, you don't even care mm-hmm. that he, yeah, you. like, yeah. And so it's like, and I was, and you're like, I'm so upset that it's, I would get mad. Be like, you're just, it's just being mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, but that's, I, it is, there, there's also a point where I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> no, now, oh, there's but all like, kinds of things I wouldn't do now. Now, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm even just age wise, you just go, I can't be this emotional about, Right. Athletics. Like, I can get frustrated. I can get whatever. I can have, like, I don't know why they're doing this. You know, yeah. Titans trade A.J. Brown. You're like, why are they doing that? I don't know why they're they, – blah, blah, whatever. And then I also have to go have a life. Yeah. yeah. I don't – like, I can't – Especially when there's no it. payoff ever. Yeah. You know? You're like, I want to win. It would be a lot to me to win, but it's like I can't I can't be wrapped up in – Yeah. Just, yeah. I have those moments, though. Where, where <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not proud. <laughs> Everybody – I get it. What's a recent one, Greg? Well, you punched a fan. No, I mean, I remember when I was living in New York, my my uh, mom and dad came to uh, the city to visit for like three or four days, and and uh, Cardinals happened to be in the NLCS that uh, week, and we went. There's a bar down somewhere around Thirty Third that was a Cardinal bar, which that's the coolest thing about yeah. New York is you have these places where it's like. Oh man, it's like I'm back in St. Louis. Yeah, it was yeah. w- one of the funnest things ever about New York. So I took them there, and they loved it. And uh, we were watching the game, and uh, they lost to the Giants in a terrible game. And uh, you know, I, me and my dad got in an argument about it. And, and it was my mom, you know, was there, and it was. I just like, why do we waste this time being mad about yeah. baseball when I had my parent, my mom. Uh, you know, passed away a few years later. So uh, I'm like, why, why did yeah. I? We're sitting there arguing yeah. about baseball and mad about baseball when I had my mom in the city with yeah. me. And, you know, yeah. we could, I, I, I was like so upset that day about the Cardinals. It's stupid. Yeah. And but that's yeah. But then uh, I think feel like your mom just you're like it's hard not to. It's almost like you gave her a piece of home. Yeah. Like, no, she <laughs> loved it. Yeah, she yeah, loved. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah. when she talked about, it, she's like that bar that had all the. I mean, they yeah, loved it. But yeah. I just think about how silly it was. And then I. I'm a big college wrestling fan and I'm, yes. I'm a Missouri fan. And, uh, you know, I, the, I've had my dad and I, that's one of the things that we share. My dad was a high school wrestling coach. So we go, you know, we went to the big 12 tournament this year. We yeah. go to a lot of stuff. And, uh, I mean, we always wind up arguing about stuff. And I, and I, and, and it, it, I mean, I'm so passionate about the arguments and then on the way, you know, after I drop him off, I'm like, well, what am I doing? This is my yeah. dad. <laughs> like, yeah, but I think, y'all, that almost weirdly might be a bonding thing. It probably like, is, yeah. It's a nice, like, you know, you're, you're – you're, it's it's not bad. Like, sometimes arguing, you know, with – you argue sports stuff, it's an outlet. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I get it. Like, and you and your dad, like, have this – I mean, there's not many you can probably argue with about wrestling. yeah. Like I don't, you're not walking in just any nah, sports it's, bar. It's not a lot of bars at all. <laughs> you kidding me, dude? Guys, <laughs> his ear, his ear things are not even the right color. And you're ear like, thing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes, he grabs the back of his neck. You can't grab the back of his neck. His shoulders run down. <laughs> you're like, no one. Everybody's like, yeah, all right, true. dude. Yeah. Uh, it's so you were a big time wrestler. A lot of people. I mean, oh, I, I, I think I don't know who. If people don't know this, all American. Uh, Greg Warren. 
is uh, was an All American wrestler at Missouri. And uh, this is the match that this this match that you guys are showing. That that guy was a, that guy's name was Tim Krieger. Yeah, he was a two time national champ, and he I think he got second twice, maybe second. I, he lost like twice in his college yeah. career. There were some days when I lost three, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy killed me. This is the one. Yeah, this guy was. Yeah. The, Why are I, you showing this one? It's the only thing on the internet, I think. Oh. That, yeah, it's probably the only match that. No, uh, it was the first reason. I, but, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There was plenty of you winning. Yeah, but, this, yeah, guy, yeah. this guy murdered me. Man. I, th there's a story. I, um, I, this is a really, a, a true, I wrestled this guy, not in this match. I wrestled him earlier in the year that year. That's at the Big Eight Championships. Yeah. And uh, I was a freshman. And uh, my coach was one of his, Wes Roper, and he was one of those guys like, you know, he's like, Warren, I don't care who this guy is or what he's done. You go out there, you take it to him. You don't yeah. show him any respect, you know? Yeah. And uh, I got on top of him in, I think it was the second period or something, and I had this move called the Leg Szeski, and it was pretty – it was pretty tough, you know. Is it like off named after uh, that guy? Some guy named Szeski, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this guy named Tim Szeski, I yeah. think. Um, and uh, I was pretty good at it, and I got it. And uh, he, I think he had a bad leg. I wasn't doing it because he had a bad leg, but I uh, I, I was wrenching him pretty good. Yeah. I was still getting beat, but I was wrenching him pretty good. And he like yeah. was like, ah, and they had to stop the match, you know, and he went over to his corner to get taped up. Uh, and I went over to my corner thinking, yeah, you know, Roper's, Roper's going to be like proud of me. He's like, yeah. like karate kid. Yeah. He's like, Warren, I'm not sure I would have made him mad like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, cause he was like, basically like he was, he was hurt. He was going to cruise yeah. through the match and beat me about eight yeah. to five, yeah. or, you know, eight to two or something and just sort of take it easy. And he was, ex man, as soon as, as soon as we got back out there, it was like, he, he, he ripped my head off, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was a mission wow. at that point, man. Yeah. And yeah. so like, that's so great. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, when you're wrestling, like the, you guys are, is it the point of you trying to pin them, right? Like in, like in, like this college wrestling. It's just, pretty rare that, uh, that people get pinned in division one college wrestling. And pinned. It happens a little bit. Is yeah. that the, the, it's over? It's over. Three yeah. seconds. It's three yeah. seconds. It's no, it's, uh, man, when I was wrestling, I think it's a two count, but now it's yeah. like a one count. Like if oh. your shoulder blades are on the mat for a one count, it's over. Yeah. And it, so it does happen every now and then. So that thing that he's doing to me was the thing that I was doing to him. Oh. It's called a leg Szeski, and it's it's oh. yeah, it's just he's just ripping me. And then what? And so how does it stop? Like what do you do? You go, do you tap out or something? Or do you no, have, like, no, yeah. it's three periods, like yeah. a three minute period, a two minute period, a two two minute period. It's their scoring, you know. So you're you're not trying to like, could you say I'm out or quit or something? You could, no, no, no. Oh. I mean. I guess you, 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 you know, could. You, you know, well, I mean, there's, there's, you could just roll over and get pinned, you yeah. know, yeah. you know, you could oh, get yeah. up and run away too, <laughs> theoretically. <you know? laughs> but like, yeah, so that this, really wouldn't have gone over well. <laughs> yeah. man. I don't, I don't know. You lose. Yeah, yeah. That would have been. So the point of like wrestling is like, it's just three. So it's almost pretty ruthless because it's three minutes and there's no like, they're just trying to score points on Yeah. It. Yeah. It's so all, every move and every, so it's basically like every move that hurts you is a point. Um, not as much. Yeah. I mean, to go on your back a lot of time, yeah. it's, it's pain. Like a lot yeah. of times it's sort of like you're in pain, you're in pain. And to release the pain, you're going to go on your back. Yeah. And then if the guy holds you there for a certain amount of points, certain amount of counts, he gets a certain amount of points. Yeah. But you know, you start the match on your feet and one guy's trying to get control of the other guy and that's two points. Yeah. And then you get out. It's, it's a little boring. So this dude was like, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, this guy was crazy. one of the best I've ever wrestled. This guy was, uh, he was a maniac. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, it's crazy that he, and he seemingly did that leg thing to you to just be like, yeah, I can do that too, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. you know, yeah, he was, and uh, you wrestled the same time as Kurt Angle, right? Yeah. I think I was probably maybe a year or two younger than him. Okay. And maybe two, he was at Clarion when I was there. Yeah. Um, Clarion School? Yeah. Clarion's a, a college in, uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What? I think the hotel? So yeah, I go. Yeah, the hotel. <laughs> yeah, he wow, was. You just, guys <laughs> wrestled for you know, sponsors. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Uh, with Courtyard by Marriott for <laughs> a couple <laughs> years. <laughs> Uh, is yeah. there, is I tell you, you don't want to wrestle the red roof guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'll tell you what, that yeah, was they're hungry, rude. man. Those guys are hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is yeah. there anything about professional wrestling when you watch it that's like interest to you as far as no. wrestling tactics? No, that's just no. It's, that's just. Could you enjoy it? Yeah, that's what I, I think. I, from like a like, I thought it was funny when I was a kid. Yeah. I remember going. I thought it was pretty funny, and I, yeah. yeah, I liked it. You know? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So I mean, but people realize like, and you don't ever talk about it. But you're an all American. You were, uh, 
you know, Mike Vecchione, who wrestled at Penn State. Yeah, right? yeah. Mike Vecchione would always say that we'd always talk about you because he would talk about wrestling. And then Vecchione would be, we'd be like, because people were like, oh, Greg Warren used to wrestle. Could y'all wrestle? And Vecchione was like, Greg would rip my head off. <laughs> he goes, it wouldn't even be, you couldn't even watch it. It would be unfair. Not today. Vecchione's in a lot better shape than I am. I, well, I, we're going to yeah, see. Yeah. We're about to bring him in. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Mike, come on Mike, in. I Mike, come on in. This Y'all is just terrible, have to start man. doing it. <laughs> yeah. no, he's, uh, Vecchione's a, Vecchione's a maniac. Uh, yeah. it, you know, he's one of the funniest guys I know and, and a great yes. guy. But he he was a, a good high school wrestler. I think he either won the state in Florida or got second in Florida. He was. Yeah, he was a good high school wrestler. And uh, and he decided to walk on at Penn, Penn state. state, which was like – a top three program. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, and he was, Florida was not a great wrestling state. I mean, he was yeah. a good wrestler. And, you know, Vecchione, if you've seen the way yeah. he writes jokes, he's like, he was just like, okay, I'll just work yeah. as hard as I can yeah, and, yeah. and I'll be there. But like, he should have gone somewhere to some mid level, yeah. you know, and they would have brought him around. Like, he goes in and immediately he's probably like fifth string behind like some of the yeah. biggest recruits in the country. Like, I wouldn't have gone to Penn State. And I was a guy who, you know, I started wrestling when I was five years old. My father's my coach. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. I, I had probably better qualifications coming out. I'd wrestled in all, you know, Vecchio was a good football player in high school. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd, I wrestled all year round almost. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, but yeah, he's a, he's a madman. I was like, why'd you go there? He's like, well, I just, you know, yeah. I wanted did, to go to the best place. Yeah. Did you win? Uh, yeah. That, I mean, that's fake. Yeah. Did you win? Uh, you won state and all like high I won school. state just, twice in high school. Where were you school? ranked in high school like, coming out? Were you like top? Were no, you one or I don't, top? I don't, like, you know, when I do that or. It wasn't as prevalent as yeah. it is now. I mean, um, I think there was some publication where I was mentioned or something, mm -hmm. but Missouri wasn't. Usually, you had to win one of these national tournaments. And usually in high school, there's a big junior national tournament. I did it yeah. after my junior year, and uh, I didn't place. But, uh, you know, I won probably like 10 matches and still didn't place. And I lost to some of the same guys I lost to in college. Like, that, yeah. you know, like uh, – and then my senior year – I went to the I went to West Point my senior, my freshman year of college so I I didn't do any of that stuff I was in basic training that, yeah. that summer so I, I went to the army uh, uh -huh. for my, the my fir whole first year of college yeah. and then transferred to Missouri you, uh, you know uh uh who else which is a for you to get into West Point is impressive it's, I quit I should make that clear <laughs> <laughs> it's just the fact that you got in the fact that you were going to do that is unreal uh you know who else is Shane Gillis went to uh oh did he? he went to west point for wow. one year yeah and then oh i'd love to talk i don't know shane yeah. but i'd love to talk because we did what he and i did then it's pretty rare usually if you make it through the first year you stay yeah See, I, I think he made it the first year but he went and went and then ended up transferring maybe he didn't make it the whole way but i don't know i don't remember yeah but he I, played football shane gills played football really and went to uh and then went to Elon and played football after that. Oh, yeah. Is that North Carolina? Or, or? I don't know. Yeah. I, think I, so. didn't get, I didn't yeah. get that deep into it with him. Yeah, that's pretty uh, That's pretty cool. I had no idea, man. I'd love to talk yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, should. Yeah. Uh, very funny guy. And if, then, uh, yeah, that's very interesting, though. What I was going to say, if some heckler rushed the stage now, are there moves you could do to take him down? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm not in, in, in shape, like wrestling shape yeah. by any stretch, but I think there's some – I remember um, – you know, when I first moved to New York, uh, we were talking about earlier. I was walking, like I was, I was just. You're walking. on your walks. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. on my walk. <laughs> yeah, I was on my walk in the low, uh, like the East Village. I lived in the Lower East Side, and I was on my walk. Yeah, and uh, this guy just was like uh, behind me. He's like, "Hey, man, what are you looking at?" Uh, and uh, I'm like, you know, nothing. You know, nothing, man. I just and then uh, I go nothing, and, and then he's, "What are you looking at, man?" And I was like, "Hey, man, nothing." man and i just kept walking and he sprinted up and he uh he got my face and uh and uh i said something and he, and he punched me like it was a pretty like pretty good shot wow. I, I mean i was dumb enough to like i could not have set my chin on a t <laughs> more clearly yeah. i was like where are you gonna hit me right there yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know and i uh I, and he punched me in the face um and uh for about it was probably like a four second 
pause where I was like, you, you feel like a victim in the city sometimes, yeah. you know, where yeah, you're just yeah. like, oh, everybody's around me. I just need to be. And then I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I'll just finish up my walk, you, mm -hmm. you know? And then, and then I was like, wait a minute, man, I practice doing this every day for yeah. 20 years. I practice fighting. Yeah. And I just, I just like, it, so I just shot a single leg to the right side <laughs> and I, I picked his leg up and uh, he went right down. And then I'm like on top of him screaming at him. And, and then it, within about five seconds, I was like, oh, I'm about to. I'm fighting a heroin addict. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, like this guy's, there was something <laughs> yeah. wrong with him, you know, yeah. like it was, and that, he had nothing after yeah. that punch, man. He had, yeah. <laughs> it was all in that punch. And it wasn't a bad punch, but after that he had zero, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I still remember that. And I, and I like was like screaming at him and I was like, get out of here, man, or, or whatever. And there's this dude, of course, there's some guy with a cell phone, you know, <laughs> yeah. taping it. And he's like, yo dog, wh why he hit you? I'm like, I don't know, man, he's crazy. He's like, you a champ, dog. You a champ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and I and then it was over. And like, if that happened in the suburbs where I live in St. Louis right now, it would be in, on the news or yeah, in the paper. Yeah, like, yeah. but people in New York were like, ah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that it's, guy it's, probably deleted the video. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. We have that video right yeah, now. Oh yeah. It, 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 well, it, it, trust me, star. I'd rather see that video than what you're showing I right now <laughs> about me. But I remember I, I got home and I called I called two two people. I called the, my brother who lived in Jersey for a long time. He's like, ah, it's just the East Coast, man. And, and, then, yeah. and then I called Vecchione, who I'd met through Nate. I didn't yeah. know Mike before I moved to uh, to New York, but I knew this guy's a wrestler, so I knew I'd like him. Yeah. And I called Vecchione and told him the story. And then I called somebody else, and they were like, dude, that thing's going to wind up on like the internet. Yeah. That thing's going to make your career. I'm like, hey, man, I had... I have a Comedy Central special yeah. at this point. It's like, <laughs> yeah. nah, man, it wasn't that good. This yeah. thing <laughs> is gonna. Yeah. This is the thing that's gonna make yeah. your career. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's, that's so you know how to do it if something happens. I think like, if some, like, you, you know, now well, if it was a kid that could wrestle, like, but when up until about I'm 53 now. When I was in my early 40s, maybe late 30s, my dad was still coaching, and I could go with really good high school kids, not mm. college kids. And then a few years later, I was up in. I just haven't done it. And I was up in Columbus and the the club owner there, Dave Stroop, uh, yeah. Dave's a friend of mine, a great guy and used great to wrestle. Guy. And yeah. he, he, uh, he, um, had me, his son was at some wrestling camp and I went to this wrestling camp and I was showing mostly just like trying to make him laugh and yeah. showing some, uh, showed him some technique. And then there was a college kid there and like an idiot. I was like, yeah, I'll go a little bit. And I'm, 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 I'm I almost had a heart attack. And I remember, have you ever been like so exhausted? I like had a cold the rest of the <laughs> I had a cold the rest of the week at the show. I don't know. People are like, well, that's not possible. Like, no, I swear this I had a cold after that. You got beat. I got beat. I got beat so, so bad. bad I had a cold. Yeah. And I was like, I'll never yeah. never You're again. You're the only man. one that's like, I can't work out, I'll get sick. <laughs> Your immune system was down. It did, man. I swear I got a cold. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I can't go with somebody that knows how to go anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. could, I could take. Yeah. yeah. What do y'all do when y'all go? Y'all like it's like you just like trying to get each other down and like you know. Yeah, I mean, like, there's like a playful. Is there? Is like it get real? Boxing almost. Yeah. There's there's that's become a lot more popular. It's sort of like what they call sparring, where you're mm -hmm. going about fifty percent. And Mike's alma mater, which now, Penn State now is overwhelmingly the dominant school. Oh really? Yeah, they've won like. 10 out of the last 11 championships or something mm -hmm. like, and that guy that coaches there, Kale Sanderson, it's all about that. You hear those guys talk like, Hey, we do a lot of play wrestling, you know, and they, and they do a lot of sparring. When I was uh, in college, it was, um, you know, you're drilling, you're practicing technique or you're going full out live and you're just, you know, trying to tear each other's head off. And that we did too much of that back then. Like yeah. we just, cause I didn't, I think I could have been better, you know, like yeah. if I, I I'd stopped, it's almost the equivalent of uh, a comic who stops writing. You yeah. know, like I, I, I was going to practice every day. I was trying hard. I was dedicated, but I'd stopped working on new technique. And uh, I don't. I, I wish I could go back. You know, my my intellectual curiosity just sort of drained out of me because probably because I was like dreading the fact that we're going to beat the hell out of each other for the next you know hour, yeah, yeah. hour and a half. So you're just looking at it like, yeah, you just the older you get, and you've done it forever. Yeah, I was and, just getting through yeah, it. You yeah. know, and um. You know, I've been in places like that in comedy, and and I look mm -hmm. back, I'm like, what was I doing, man? Why, yeah. I wasted that whole 
Yeah. Nine oh, yeah. months, not, you know, worrying about my career or worrying about whether my career is when I could have been writing jokes. And, it, yeah. you know. Well, it's like you worry instead of make it. Like you're making it. Like, yeah. You know, it's like you're, and a lot happens a lot. It's very easy to fall into, but you, you sit there and you just worry about it when you go, well, I can decide it. I yeah. can make it. Yeah. And then that's where you get the decision. Because then if you at least are trying to make it, you get a concrete decision of yes or no. Yeah. Versus when you're kind of half doing it. There's no, no one can really say yes or no. You could think you deserve It's like a very thin, like blurred line. And But if you're like, well, I here it is. And I finished the product. Yeah. Now you have to tell me yes or no. Yeah. And if you say no, then I know. All oh, right, I, was yeah, good. Yeah. I know why. Yeah. And then I can adjust. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I mean, and it's such a cool thing that we can all do. Like yeah. all of us can do that now. We can yeah, always yeah. be like, I'm going to write this thing. This morning, I'm going to sit down and work. I do thing. it. I'd never say my like. Uh, I always think I would. Uh, people like talk about regrets and stuff like that. Like like career regrets. Like, uh, and it's like I'll. Like, I think I'm always like, I'm, I'm pretty big. Like, you know, whatever happened, happened. There's, there's reason it happened. I wouldn't go back and change anything. It's like, I needed to go through all this stuff, but there is some that when I think back, the only thing I would have probably done when I was younger is like, it's like, don't go eat as bad and hang out and drinking. And like some of that stuff is like, I wish I would have, I was still working, Yeah, but it's like, you're, I was, it was, it, it made it hard Cause it's like I'm staying out till, which at the beginning, I mean, sometimes you, you need to do this, but it's there should have been a point where I should have probably like calmed it down sooner than I did, and I think I could have maybe sped up a little bit just because you would have had the energy to speed up. Right, you were hanging with a crew that was, you know, the part of that though is like, you, yeah, you, you're it's, you're around all these funny people. Yeah, because yeah. I know you're you were in your 20s yeah. in New York with yeah all these monsters of comedy. You, yeah, you, I, I, yeah. Almost like I wouldn't mess with the 20s. The 30s I would maybe be like, <laughs> okay. I probably tone them down. Like 35, you start going like, all right, man, like this is happening. So <laughs> let's, you know, focus on. But I don't know. I mean, look, I can't, nothing's sped up. Like I can't, you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't know. As I say this, you're like, but then I have a lot of experiences and stories and yeah. that stuff that I wouldn't have had if I would have done some other stuff. Not that you need them because of drinking, but just I stayed maybe in New York longer than maybe I would have if I would have, you know, and that was a good thing that I stayed there longer. And, yeah. Uh, so I don't, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. You told, and you quit in your late 30s, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Yeah. Because you, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I think it's drinking, I, not drinking. comedy. Yeah. A lot of people think comedy. <laughs> uh, I think 2019, I can never remember. 2019, I was at Charlotte Comedy Zone. Last comedy club I did. We were about, I, next thing I was going to do was theaters. And so it was the last comedy club I did. Really? And then I knew if I didn't, I knew I couldn't carry it on. If I, if I wanted to get to the level that I wanted to, I knew I wouldn't, you know, because you would go hang out at these clubs and, you just would feel, t you know, Thursday would be fun and the rest of the week you'd feel miserable and you're just trying to get through the show. And yeah, too many of those where you're doing the same set, you're doing the, you know, you're not thinking of a new joke because you're like, I'm just trying to get past this. Yeah. And then you're, so I knew if I, when I was going to theaters, I was like, well, if I want to keep going, I have to end the thing that makes me be lazy. And then now I'm kind of at the point where it's food. So I'm seeing as of now being 43, I'm like, all right. Well, food's a kind of a problem. Like, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I had, I've been doing good in the last night. I got uh, Laura a little chocolate cake for Mother's Day. Didn't even want one. She didn't. I did. But I just, I go, you know what? I'm going to give her a cake. <laughs> Laura mentioned cake two weeks ago. Like, she said one day, I was like, I think I could like a piece of cake. So I go buy Mother's Day cake. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, got you this cake, ate. She hasn't eaten it. <laughs> I ate the most out of it. And then I got some regular ice cream. I usually eat Halo Top now, but Evan, I got, well, I need regular ice cream. So, I mean, literally, she got, she was at her mom's all day and she gets home. And then, and then I'm like, huh? Happy Mother's Day. And then she's like, all right, well, I'm going to go to bed. And I go, I'll probably just get in this cake a little bit. Like, Laura, was, Laura, before I bought the cake, because I bought all this yesterday. <laughs> Laura uh, said, she goes, I'm stopping to get ice cream. So she was already getting a dessert. <laughs> and I still go, but you're going to be happy when I got yeah, I got to get this other I got to get this cake for you. Because you mentioned it in passing. Yeah. And so, but I've learned, like, so food is like, I can now tell that, like, last night I was, like, in bed. And I, I could feel my thoughts just don't stop. And I'm like, oh. It's like, yeah, dude. Well, I ate. 
a piece of cake and ice cream at 10. Yeah. And I'm trying to go to sleep by 1 or 1.30. You're like, well, it's not going to happen. No. Like you're, it, you know. The, that thing never ends, though. The food thing is just it's it just, never it, ends. It, but I, I and I don't I don't ever I don't ever not go to McDonald's in my life. I'm a I love McDonald's. I love chain plate. That's I grew up eating all that stuff. Like uh, I'm not against all these things, but I've learned that it's I have to realize it's being aware of your body and like being aware of like well I don't feel good. Yeah, and and I didn't understand that because when I was in you know when I was eating McDonald's and drinking every night in New York, it's like you just get used to feeling bad. And uh, Tim, I might have said it on here before, but Tim Young, I don't know if you Yeah, Young, man. Yeah. But Tim Young, I did a cruise ship with him once, and he said he was like, he's just shredded. I mean, just perfect body. And, and he, knows all the holistic stuff. Right? All of yeah. it. Yeah. And he was doing it, uh, when we did this cruise, I mean, it's like not even like it's the fad. It's it's like, you you know, now you go places, like calories are listed everywhere, and uh you know, they have healthy options, kind of every, you know, even McDonald's, you can try to find something, but, and he would bring his own food on the cruise and he would eat his phone. And I was like, well, why do you think people don't eat good? And he said, he goes, well, I think people don't know how good it feels. And they would be addicted to that feeling if they knew. And then that always stuck with me. I still plowed through eating bad, <laughs> but it, and I still have trouble with it, but I remember that always stuck with me just because I was like, because, you know, you have days when you eat good and you're like, yeah, if you thought of that, like you thought of alcohol, you would be the healthiest person because you would be addicted to like the feeling you would get from alcohol and stuff would be, you, I mean, you're, you're just in a good mood every day. Yeah. You're, you have, you wake up, you have energy when you need coffee. Like you just are like, golly, I feel awesome. Today yeah. is all, and you're like happy. And it's like, yeah, because you're, you're just eating you now, maybe not going to the extremes of that. But it's like if you can eat good and then go eat one bad meal just so you know the next day you're like, that, yeah, I don't feel good. And you know that you don't feel good. Otherwise, you, when I, you're doing it over every day. You don't – every day is miserable. So, right. you know, and miserable in the sense that the older you get, you start – that's what now in my 40s you're like, yeah, it's I feel it way more than I ever did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 50s, it's even more uh, pronounced. Mm. Uh, yeah yeah i can imagine uh <laughs> i don't i won't ever get there but i'm staying I'm skipping going to 60 uh I, I can already you already look at your 50s as it's funny like, when you look at these ages i remember 40 and then 43 and i've now 43 used to be so old and now i look at 43 and i go dude i'm like the youngest person that's ever done comedy <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, like, yeah think yeah. that in your head <laughs> and you're you know and then uh because you're looking at 45 and you're like well that's gonna be old and then 46 doesn't feel that old for some reason. 46, 47, I think, is kind of like, you're kind of like, it's, everything's okay. And then you're, and then I imagine 50. But then I could see 50, you just see yourself going like, well, you're 50. You're like, it's nice. You know what you want. You know what you're doing. You know, like you're just. It is a little bit. Yeah. For me, 45 through 50 was the one where, I well, it was also because I didn't, I had this day job for the first 10 years of my career. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, I did a little comedy, but I didn't quit my day job until I was like 33. Yeah. So 45, like right when I was in sort of a couple years in New York and doing stuff on the road and, and I'd done some stuff, but right around then I started uh, thinking, man, I think I'm getting pretty good at comedy. And then that is right around the time when I started looking in the mirror being like, you gotta be kidding me. Man. Like <laughs> yeah. this is not, yeah. this is not, I can't, turn this around you know you know, yeah. you know like you, i just started looking a lot different uh yeah. in like that i i kind of held it off like when i was like 40 i think i looked like i was 30 yeah when i was 50 i looked like i was 50 you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it but it's but with that that mindset like it is i under i understand that i i mean i think about that too where i think you know, am I too old? Like I talk about my act about being my, I talk about my age that I am. And you're, you know, you see other, like sometimes people don't say what their age is. And sometimes you think, well, should I not be saying like, you know, you, I feel like I shouldn't be reminding people that I'm, you know, I'm 40. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think this stuff, but <clears throat> you're an, an unreal comedian, amazing comic, so funny. Oh, like one of the top <laughs> comics, everybody is giant, giant fans of you. And uh, it's, when you have an act and people go see it, it doesn't matter. And it's like, <laughs> it, you almost like, yeah, dude, if you get into the Hollywood world somewhat when you're, if you're 20. Yeah. But then where you create more, where you can 
the the it's not I want to say money with wealth, but the wealth of fans and the wealth of people following you is like that's all. If you're on the ground doing that stuff, I mean that's how you can become Walmart. Like you can become these. You're something that doesn't go away. And yeah. So when you create an act, and it's someone that can they can hang their hat on. They know I'm gonna have a good time. I know what I. I know what it is. I can't wait to see. It. And it's a good person. It's a good like. I think. I think it's it's it, it, it. I appreciate you saying that. It's more fun. And then I think about who I like. And then most of the guys I like are are pretty experienced. Although yeah. you see guys like him, and you're like, this guy figured it out w- way yeah. early. <laughs> you know? But you yes. But Aaron's very funny. And it then, is. Uh, but Aaron will get will will be you. Like it's like Aaron's. Very, very funny. Well, you were very funny. Like it's like the guys that are good are good comics. You yeah. can see that they're good comics, and you can see that they're true comics in the sense of like they're doing it the way. As an older person, you know, as you get older, you're like you can look at them going, "You're doing it the right way. You're right. doing it." You know, Aaron's doing it the right way, and he's going up every night. He's doing. He's building this act and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so that's what you can see, and that's a good. I think that's a that's a great thing. Versus when people are, you know, when you see the young kind of. You know, there's a new wave of it where sometimes these people you don't know and some of them have specials and some of them, and you're like, they don't have the experience. And I just look at it. And the hardest part I always thought of when you came up is to, you want, another one, Kurt Metzger said this, and I liked it, it uh, everything you want, it comes uh, it comes slower than you want, but quicker than you think. Yeah. And it's like that idea that you, you know, you think, well, I want it now. And then it's like, well, it's going to take a long time. And it's not, but when you get it and then- when you get to that point and you're like, you know, I earned, like, you're like, you feel more ownership over it. And yeah. the fact that like, dude, I had to go up every night for mm-hmm. every day for 20 years. Yeah. Like, or whatever it is, you're, you get in those situations, talk about those bad shows earlier where you're like, they, it's just not going to go bad. Like your show's going to be, if it's bad, it's like, well, the audience was yelling though. Like, it's like, it's some, there's a reason you're just not going to go bomb cuz yeah. like, you're just too good of a like you're too protected. Yeah, you you don't have the bad sh- you, yeah. so, uh, you know every nine now and then it's usually outside of a comedy club or some sort of weird venue. Yes. I had a bad one in front of the Cardinals one time. <laughs> it was, oh. But it's the situation. <laughs> but it was the, it's but, an unfair situation like it's a You get over it a lot. You told quicker, me the though. last time I saw you you said you've been in comedy long enough to know where you think something's going to make your career or something so bad it's going to break your career. But you've learned the highs aren't as high and the lows aren't no, as low. No, it's like some, yeah. it's a continuum. Yeah, there's, yeah. you, you know, there, which I hate to say that because there are, especially for someone like you, like there will be some magic moment. There, there, mm-hmm. you, you're, you, there could be this thing for you that completely opens up one night. Like, you know, you go to Hollywood and somebody could see it. So it could happen. But for the most part, it's usually like. You can't be trying <laughs> to find it. That's no, the thing. yeah. yeah. Don't go looking thing. for yeah, it. Yeah. It, it. When it comes, it comes. Just be, make sure, you got to make sure you're ready for it. Right. Yeah, and right. so like, that's the where the work comes in. And people don't want to do the work and they want to find a trick around it. Well, you just got to have the work come in. And when that thing happens, if you're, you know, it's a big saying, if you're, if you're a good comedian, if you're a very funny comedian, you're not going to not work. Like, it truly talent does matter and like people and whether someone gets a pop and they get a rise and they could even make a few million dollars or something but then it it will catch up to go that that was a phase i mean you could look at like dane cook i i, I'm, I think dane cook is very funny i think his specials were great i'm a big dane cook fan yeah but it's like dane cook had the rise of like where he had these is a lot of college kids a lot of all these people going to see him is the giant thing and then where dane cook's at now and He's not in a bad place in his career, but it's not to the height that it was. And because it's like some stuff can have that. So you're like, well, I look at it as like, well, how can you create this audience that's going to stay and they're going to build with you? And I think they got to grow. And that's where an audience that I feel like kind of grows with you. And they, you know, you just talk about you and your world and then they're, they relate to it when on their own time frame. So if you have, I'm talking about having a kid, well, then you can hopefully be like, you know, there might be a, someone that's 10 years old right now, and they might listen to this in 25 years, and they they could be like, ah, I relate to that. You know, it's yeah. like you're you're yeah. just trying to do something that, like, relatability is what I'm a big fan of, because it's you're, you're talking about experiences and mm-hmm. stuff that people can do, and then they can relate to it, and then they draw off of it. It doesn't have to be this kind of, you know, if it's a fad that you're talking about, it's like, well, that fad could go away. I mean, look at clothes. Like, you can't talk about one thing and then like clothes come back. I mean, these Bates bell bottoms. Can. I do it from stage. He does right, stage. right from the stage. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what clothes you got on? <laughs> yeah. What's under that t-shirt? Yeah. Is that an Auburn shirt? What do you do? You wear 
<laughs> you wear uh, like a wife beater. You wear a full t-shirt. On your t he goes, I do the full t-shirt. He goes, I should do that too. Uh, this guy's a man. this guy's good. <laughs> this guy. He goes, you, you, this guy's on him. He's yeah, the best. This guy's crazy, dude. I don't know what he's gonna say. He'll cut you to the quick, man. I'm sitting up front, and the guy goes, "You got a belt on? My shirt was untucked. How did you know I have a belt on?" <laughs> It's the best I've seen. <laughs> I mean, he asked me, but I think he knew. <laughs> uh, I was going. I meant to tell you this. So I saw uh, uh, you, but you're you're wrestling. I was. I do like to. I love. Uh, I mean, you were an All American. you I believe your name and stuff is all on the wall at Missouri. Uh, uh, that pick of him. It's, no, I don't. Oh, well. No, you sorry. guys just got that one video of me taking did, a beating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go first? The only one we got is just. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you're, so you know who I saw uh, when we went on vacation? I saw Michael Chandler. Oh, yeah, uh, man. I know him. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. And so I, I told, uh, I saw him and I ran into Michael Chandler, actually, UFC this weekend won this yeah, weekend. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Crazy knockout. He's the guy. I'm sure you've seen the videos where he kicked Tony Ferguson. Kicked the guy. If I'm sure people have seen pictures, even if you don't watch UFC, he kicked him straight with his foot. And uh, but it's so I saw him. He was at the pool, and I, and I saw him. And I'm a I'm a big UFC fan. Are you? I'm okay. A giant UFC fan. Yeah. And then I think it's the I think they're just doing it the best right now. Almost of all sports, they're just they they sell sh they sell shows very well. Like the the fights are great. You the drama that's around it. Like it's I'm a I'm a giant fan. And uh, so. Uh, I saw him and I was like, hey, Michael Chandler, right? And I talked to him, whatever. And uh, it was very cool. But then when I, he, he, so we talked about uh, Missouri and we, I talked about you. Because I, I, I told him I was a comic and I go, oh, I, I'm friends with Greg Warren. And he goes, oh, Greg, because you ran with his brother, I guess. I knew his, uh, Eric and I, his brother's an actor. Yeah. We, we did a couple projects. I put him in some videos. Yeah. That, yeah, some yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, and I asked him, I said, Greg's like the real deal, right? He goes, oh, yeah, dude. He's like, his is like names on the wall. It's wow. like his face is on the wall. He's like an All-American. They go, yeah. he's like the real, real deal. And so it was like cool to, out. You know, it's not like you're standing there with me. Yeah. Where he has to say it, something nice. That's it's really outside nice. Mike, of it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, dude. Greg Warren's like. That's real nice. Real legit. Here. Yeah, Mike, I, I mean, I, I've always stayed close to the program. And I, they would have me go do like, the coach and I are friends. And yeah. uh, back when Mike was wrestling there, I would like, he, he'd have me come in before practice and do like a, like 20 minutes for those guys to try to yeah. get them, you know, to get them a laugh before yeah. practice or whatever. But Chandler is insane. Cause he was never a high school state champion. Yeah. And then he good. was an all American in college. And then he's, you know, he's, I mean, he's fought for the title. Yeah. I mean, and he he, imagine their shot at it too. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. He trains man. here in Nashville. Oh, does he really? Yeah. I thought he was in San Diego. Okay. Uh, or maybe, I don't know if he trains here. Maybe he, maybe he lives here or something. But he trained, or maybe he's in Florida when he trained for a fight. Yeah. And I think when he's not fighting, he might be here. Yeah, he's a, he, man, he's yeah. a good guy. His family's really nice, too. I, I yeah. know his mom and dad a little bit. Yeah, they're, it's good-hearted. I mean, him and his wife, I think they adopted two. Uh, I mean, we met his son, uh, which you saw him this weekend if he was on, if you watched the fight. Mm -hmm. And they just adopted another baby. And, uh, you know, which is, I'm, you know, adoption's like, it's the my mom would always say it's the most selfless thing you could yeah. do. Yeah, and so it's uh yeah they're it's they're good people. Yeah, I, I loved like being in the pool too with them. Just in the fact that not that, that sounds like, <laughs> yeah, like just being, being around them because because when we got in the pool we take a shirt off. I was like God, <laughs> yeah, I blew them. And then uh, <laughs> no, but like in the pool that like we're sitting there and you're just like you could beat up. I mean maybe. Probably ninety five percent of the state. Oh yeah, man. That Much guy. less this hotel. Like <laughs> yeah. you walk around with just no fear. Yeah. yeah. Ever. Yeah, because see the wrestlers. You know, uh, a lot of fights wind up in a wrestling match. Yeah. You, you don't usually stare. At it. But then those he can also punch somebody. Yeah. Like I, my hands are tiny. I couldn't hit anybody and do any damage. Like he can punch somebody and kick them and like yeah, he's a, he's a really tough guy. So I didn't know you were a fan. So do, like. And I'm not a giant MMA guy, but I I follow him, and then I, I was a I, I'm friends with Ben Askren, oh, so yeah, uh, cool. who's a yeah I, 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 I love that guy's philosophy on on life and yeah. athletics and everything. Yeah. And, uh, and Tyron Woodley is a St. Louis guy and wrestled at, at Missouri too. Oh yeah, who I knew a little bit. Uh, I saw him once uh, at uh, I didn't know, I don't know any of these guys, but uh, I saw him once at the at Disney World, and I I try to write a joke about it like. I was like, you're looking at this guy that could beat up 
you just think there's not a man in this park. There's just not. Right. Like that on that level, I mean, I think he was a champion, UFC champion. Yeah. Uh, and so on that level, you're like, there's not a, you're the, it's crazy to go like, I'm a hundred percent know that you're the toughest guy that in this park, yeah, just yeah, no matter what. Right. Even the guy that thinks he can fight good, he's not, it's not this. Not with Tyron Woodley. Yeah. No. No. And so you're looking at him and then I, I, I loved, it was the idea of like being a dad. Like I, I, I got this just little glimpse. I have no, no, I don't know him, but if he's a, yeah, I'd imagine he's sweet a good guy, sweet, man. Yeah. You see him. He's just really, really nice guy. You could yeah. see him be like a great dad. And the reason you could see it was like that his five-year-old daughter, I mean, just talk to him like he was a chump. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and it's my, it's the thing that I love about children too, is like, you know, she's just like tired. Like it's a five-year-old kid, but it's just so funny that, or, you know, she's just getting a little like sleepy and they all kind of go now, now. She's like, doing that kind of stuff. And you want to be, you're just looking there like, your dad <laughs> would beat up the whole park. And you're the only one <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that has the nerve to talk back to this man. Yeah. And you're five. I never thought of it that it's way. It's just such yeah, a yeah, funny, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, like, hey, don't upset him because I don't want him to take it out on me. Uh, <laughs> God, I hope you make that into a bit. That's a yeah. great observation. Man. Yeah, I love it. Just it's the idea of uh, just children, the way they talk back to adults that could beat them up. <laughs> And it's, but it, the only way for them to do that, I believe, is I mean, it, there has to be love there, because you can, a kid's not going to do it if there's fear of that mm -hmm. they're going to get. So there, it shows me that there's got it. There's it's it's her dad, and she just is she, nothing else matters to her. Right, right. And it's like my, you know, it's like it's there's there's a lot of love there. If he was a bad father, I, she wouldn't do it. She, she would be, be aware scared. of who he was. She'd be scared yeah, of it. Yeah. But the fact that you know her no, man, he's, dad's gigantic and i love I, I just that little moment i didn't even i told him i walked by and said big fan like that was it but i just i remember seeing it and it was just like yeah the funniest a five-year-old girl she's like get, you know, she's like she's not being a bad kid she's just tired like yeah. it's a throwing a fit and she's just like i don't want to do you know and he's like come on like trying to get her to do something <laughs> and you're like he can make anybody do anything yeah, yeah. literally there's not a person in this park yeah that could talk to him and he would kill him. Yeah. he would go to jail for life yeah and just the only one if you want to say something to him like have her do it <laughs> come through yeah, her yeah. and just be like I don't like your dad's parking job do you <laughs> mind telling him that he parked outside the lines just so there you go yeah. that's the angle yeah. yeah yeah might be a bit I need time I need more time so mm -hmm. uh, alright we need to be I mean we're we have to come back and we're do Missouri with you because there's probably a lot of Missouri stuff that we didn't do yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I mean you guys took shots at the mule I don't know if I want to you might not come back I get it I get it start your own mule podcast said my, called, you called our animal a <laughs> Middle act or something. <laughs> Middle act is being gracious. Yeah. Like guest spot. <laughs> open yeah. open yeah. mic. I think like, I think your 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 animal's the the animal that picks you up from the airport. Because, I mean, it's got to carry your yeah. bag. Takes you to radio in the morning. That's pretty much it. Uh, uh, so Greg Warren, check every uh, your website, uh, all your tour dates. Greg's uh, an amazing, amazing comic. I remember hearing him uh, when I was first starting uh, at Bob on Bob and Tom. You were on Bob and Tom a lot. You did a lot of stuff with them. Bob and Tom was a big radio show for me when I was going to start. I listened to I, during my I read Water Meters, so you just had Bob and Tom on and. Uh, I would listen to all the comics and I was like, I want to be a comic. So it was like such an insight to go do it. And then one of the things that I always remember that you did, I don't know if you remember it, I featured for you, I opened for you at uh, Lexington, uh, the comedy club. Oh yeah, man. And you bought my, uh, you bought my lunch and you, you were, and it was like, you're like, this is what headline, you know, it's like you take the open act, the feature act, you take them out for lunch, you buy them lunch. And I remember that always stuck with me. Oh man. It's the first like, time I met you. I drove over. I was in yeah. Louisville, and I drove over and met you oh, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. At, at Lexington? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He uh, said, he went by Brian's. He goes, I ain't buying your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He goes, I, I can't buy the whole restaurant, all right? <laughs> well, I was going to buy Bates uh, lunch, and then he, uh, he's like, hey, what, uh, what kind of shoes you got there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I told him, and I was like, man, this guy just put me yeah. down. Just, this guy. <laughs> he's the guy. best. Just on point. <laughs> he is the best. It's like, Don, Don, yeah. have Don Rickles. Over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> real, real like Don Rickles. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, overall? That's nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, Greg, uh, check out where he's touring, everything, uh, your website, y'all. Did you have anything this coming, coming up this coming weekend? Or? This comes out this week. Uh, Not working much? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a, like a bunch of corporate stuff yeah, yeah, over the yeah, next yeah. Yeah, yeah, Oh, that's so, good. Yeah, I'm, going to a, I'm going to a wedding on Saturday. So. Mm, nice. You got to do yeah. time in that? 
No, I oh, hope not, good. man. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, it never goes good. No. You know they want to ask. Too, no. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, is there like a close friend? No, it's it, it's a guy that's a comic. So if yeah. anybody's doing oh, it, he's doing oh, it. So oh, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. even like yeah. a relief. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't care that I'm a comic there. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I'm at, uh, I'm in Vegas this weekend, Spokane, Vancouver. Uh, this is like the last, this month, I mean, I, I have a bunch of summer dates and stuff like that. And then the fall will start up. Uh, th- I got, well, this is the last big run though, uh, of this, uh, of this. So I go, I'm gone, f- I'm gone and I, fr- yeah, Spokane. I mean, a lot of, a lot of places. I get my, it's all on my website, Vegas this weekend. Uh, Fresno, Santa Barbara. Nice. It was from Canada, going mm. to Vancouver. Wow. And then, uh, so, uh, come out, check that out. Uh, this Wednesday, I'm in Atlanta at the City Winery with Jen Fulwaller. Mm. And oh, yeah. um, I guess this, day, this comes out. So if you missed that, come to Aaron and I's show at, in Woodstock, Georgia. Woodstock, Georgia, May 26th. Brian and I are co-headlining. Then I'm at the Chattanooga Comedy Catch later that weekend. And then Austin, Cap City the next week. Please, oh, good. Please mm. come to that's that. Uh, yeah. I'd like to move some tickets for oh, that. That's great. Yeah. And, go go to Austin. Austin, Cap City is a big club. Man, it's that's a big uh, deal. It's a big deal to get to headline that. That's and, a really big deal. Yeah. It's one of the yeah. coolest places, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very big yeah. deal for us as comics. And when you get a headline Cap City, <clears throat> it's a, um, it's an honor. And so it's like, uh, yeah. So if you're gonna pick one, you just go to that. Don't worry about yeah. the other show. Last, last thing I want to say, yeah, yeah. Salt Lake City, Wise Guys, Brian and I oh, yeah. both be there at the end. Another of great June. one. Mm-hmm. Another great one. That's a big one too. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a yeah. good one. So like, yeah, yeah, when you work wise guys, it's a big deal. If you can't get tickets to see Nate, see the other two thirds of the podcast. Arguably, yeah. arguably two thirds. Uh, your partners. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. My yeah. business partner here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. life partner. insurance. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting life insurance because Aaron. Y'all talk. Y'all have a meeting to talk about what you would like to present, <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you whose idea it was, it, and then you have to tell on each other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then you have to go down together. I go, well, this is the dumbest <laughs> <laughs> thing. You're like, what if we did a uh, barn door as a table? <laughs> and what are y'all even? What ideas are y'all? Bates did it. Bates thought Bates I didn't. Did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing a lot of crowd work. Here's what like. I'd be like, what a barn door I tell you, I don't know if I'll do it. Can I see it? And Aaron's like, we well, didn't bring it. Uh, <laughs> I go, so I can't see it. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, I'll have it in about two months. Uh, it's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> little callback. That's how you do comedy. Yeah. Right? That's a good yeah, button man. on that. little button on that. That is a button. That is a button. All right, everybody. We love you. Thank you for listening. As always, uh, we appreciate it. None of that's lost on us. Can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. See you next week. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.